Good evening. Welcome to the meeting of the Board of Selectmen for November 13th, 2018. Uh, let's open our meeting by all rising for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everyone. Uh, before the general meeting, the board met in executive session to approve executive session minutes, consider litigation strategy with respect to the petition of Eversource Energy, and to discuss strategies with respect to contract negotiations with non-union employees as discussion in open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining positions of the board. So now we enter our general session. Bob, is this too loud? I'm hearing this echo. Hot mic. All right. All right. <laughs> um, and as is our custom, we will start with our public session. If anyone would like to uh, bring something up to the board, please, please approach the mic. We'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Silence is deafening. Okay. <laughs> All right, hearing nothing, um, we will move to our first agenda item, and these are staff appointments, uh, special police officer appointments. The Board of Selectmen will consider appointing the following public safety employees as special police officers. Telecommunications Specialist Kylie Davis, Firefighter Sarah Jordan, and Firefighter Robert Karen. Um, would, let's see, they are police officers, so Chief, perhaps you'd like to speak to this. Sure, we offer uh, special uh, appointments uh, just for traffic only, work and details. We've been having quite a bit of trouble filling details lately with the amount of work that's going on in town. So uh, all of them uh, work uh, for the fire department, we've been here for several years now, as well as uh, I have been here over a year as a telecommunications. So they've been trained by our regular officers, but you know, as a, no, no guns or anything else like that, just strictly traffic uh, enforcement details. No tasers? No tasers. <laughs> OC? Nothing. <laughs> so this gives, you, this gives you a little more uh, the radio and a little more staff help if you need. flexibility, <laughs> I assume. OK. Thank you. Uh, that sounds good. Are there any questions from the board? No, no I'd like to. I'll no, I guess we're not ready for a motion, are we? If there are no board questions, I will request a motion to appoint the following special police officers to terms expiring June 30th, 2021 Kylie Davis, Sarah Jordan, and Robert Karen. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Okay, very good. Uh, second, we have a fire department appointment. The fire chief will advise the Board of Selectmen on his, appointments, uh, on his appointment of firefighter Maxwell Israeloff. Chief Miller. Good uh, evening. <laughs> Deputy Chief Miller. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Glad to have you here. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity and welcome one of our newest members, um, Maxwell Israeloff. Um, I was tasked by Chief Slayman to work on this project for our, our next new hire and working closely with HR. Uh, I feel we have a very good candidate and I uh, would like to appoint Max as one of our newest members to Hopkinton Fire. Uh, Max comes to us from Natick. He's a native of Natick and attended Natick High School. Uh, he attended UMass Amherst. Amherst before transitioning to Mass Bay Community College to attend his uh, paramedic school and obtain his paramedic certificate. Uh, Max has been a paramedic for about two years now. Um, he works for Catalo EMS, serving the city of Waltham and the town of Wellesley prior to coming to us on a 911 truck. So Max comes with us with an EMS experience. So we're very excited to have that. Um, some of his hobbies, Max enjoys working out, including hiking and doing working out in the gym on his uh, part-time days off. So. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce Maxwell Israeloff to the board and welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Hi. 
How is everybody? Hi, sounds great. Yes, my dad's here. If we could, I'd like to uh, have Max's dad pin him prior to, if that's okay with the board. Absolutely, that's so have wonderful. Your dad come on up. Um, yeah. Sorry, his dad buffing his head on the way up the stairs. <laughs> Well, um, why don't you do your penny and then maybe we'll give the board a, check, a chance to make some comments. It's a physics thing. Let's take him. Get him. I get him. We've got a paramedic here in case I feel myself, I guess. That's right. This is way higher than it's good. Get it close enough. That's it. Okay. There we go. Good job, Dad. There we go. go. I just want to say I have uh, tremendous faith in Chief Slamman, who has, for the last couple of years, done a wonderful job in building the force and elevating the level of the force and uh, really showing us some excellent, excellent new hires. So um, if you're good with the Chief, you're good with me as far as I'm concerned. We're <laughs> delighted to have you on board, Max. Other board members, questions or comments? So I have coffee every morning in Natick with uh, a whole bunch of Natick retired firefighters. Oh, really? <laughs> Cannot wait to bring this up to them tomorrow. Oh. Stole one of those. I'm in trouble. <laughs> one of those guys. Um, I have, uh, for a long time, professed how much greater of a town Hopkinton is than Natick. And uh, I cannot wait to see, I don't know if you know any of the Natick firefighters, but there's Rocky Melchiori and Skip Tomasetti and uh, those guys in there, I have, they're retired. <laughs> Die-hard towny firefighters and uh, uh, Milkyori. Yep. Uh, I think I may have gone to high school with his daughter. Uh, went to Notre Dame. Oh no, in uh, high school. Uh, I'm not sure about not sure about uh, college. So, <clears throat> uh, welcome to town. To pass the uh, the rigorous stringent requirements by Deputy Chief Miller and Chief Slammon, obviously you've uh, you're you're able to hold your own. So uh, it's nice that you're coming in with some medic experience. You're coming into uh, in my opinion, the greatest town and the greatest department around. So hold that, uh, hold that honor proudly. Thank you. Thank you. I saw uh, Max just give his dad a hug like we all did. And uh, I can tell uh, just from that little exchange there that uh, both are very proud of each other. And I think that compassion and that uh, love you two have, I think will play out and as you do your job here in Hopkinton, you're going to arrive on scene, you're going to come upon people that are in distress, and I think that uh, that emotion that you bring uh, to the to, to tonight, uh, but I think you'll bring that to the job too, so uh, I'm a quick, try to be a quick study of people, and I really liked what I just saw there, so welcome, and we're glad to have you. Thank you. You know, it's hard to argue with any recommendation that comes from uh, Chief Slimming uh, in our department, so I think... Uh, I think the fact that, they, that they're choosing you says an awful lot to me. So I just want to say thank you for coming to our town. Um, welcome aboard. And um, you know, I have the utmost respect for, for all first responders. I mean, the way that you can approach uh, a dangerous situation calmly, cool head, and approach it, I have the utmost respect. I don't know, I don't know how you do it. But uh, I'm just glad to have you. Yeah, thank you very much for coming. Thanks for joining us. You know, we're, we really do have a great department. You know, it was just exemplified right here by um, the chief um, having the, uh, the faith and in, in, uh, depth here to, to, you know, to, to take on the hiring and, 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 and all that. And this is, and this is what the, the way the department works. You know, it's really a, 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 a great transformation with um, Chief Slayman in there and um, empowering everybody else as it walks as it goes down, and um, you know just you know keep up the the attitude and everything you have, and you're going to move up great in this in our system. It's a great system. Our, our public safety is is uh, always what we in top three, top two. 
Number one. Number one. Number two. Okay, we're number two. So we're Avis. <laughs> and we're, and we're, we're, <laughs> last week. we're trying this. Uh, we're trying even harder now. Yeah, that's great. So really, you're, you're, you're going you're gonna to love it here. It's a great place. We really appreciate having you. Thanks for coming with all that experience. And uh, hopefully, um, it'll all work out great. Thank you. So Maxwell, as you can see, the Board of Selectmen is delighted to accept the advice of Chief Slamman and Deputy Chief Miller in appointing you to the Hopkinton Fire Department. Welcome aboard and thank you for joining us. Thank you, glad to be thank here. Thank you. Good luck. That's a fun part of our job. I know, I always love that part. Okay, and now we move on to the very exciting part of our agenda, the consent agenda. And the items before us this evening are item one, the board minutes. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving the October 30, 2018 Board of Selectmen minutes. Uh, item two, the EHOP banner over Main Street, the Board of Selectmen will consider approving a request from Nanda Barker Hook on behalf of EHOP for a banner preceding town meeting 2019 to be placed across Main Street. The banner would be hung on or around April 24 through to the last day of town meeting or May 8th, whichever comes first, allowing 14 days maximum for the banner to be up per the zoning bylaw. In accordance with the zoning bylaw, the size of a banner may not exceed 75 square feet. It is likely that EHOP will use the 72 or 75 square foot design depending on the distance between the utility poles. And item number three, resignation. The Board of Selectmen will consider accepting the resignation of Timoria Seba as a member and a chair of the Youth Commission. Would any member like to pull out one of these items for a separate discussion? Number three, please. Mr. Cotino, number three. Okay. All right, hearing none other, um, I will request a motion to approve items one and two, board minutes and EHOP banner on the consent agenda. So moved. Seconded somewhere? Second. Seconded by Mr. Nasrullah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Okay, that is unanimous. And we move to item three, the resignation of Timoria Seba. Mr. Coutinho. Yeah, I just, uh, I just want to um, thank uh, Timoria for everything she did while she was in town. She's just, I just saw the moving trucks at her house yesterday, and it's just really sad. Um, from the moment she came in town, she was uh, just immediately jumped in to, to help out and do what she could. Um, we were just uh, blessed to have a, a person of her caliber um, come into our town. She, uh, she would um, regularly fly down to Washington, D.C. to testify to Congress to, on, on women's issues and family issues. And to have, have her on our... Um, uh, youth Commission really helped transform it and, and make it uh, better and better every year. It's, uh, th those are going to be huge shoes to fill um, to uh, uh, have somebody as wonderful as, as she is. And I'm just really sad to see her go and um, I just want to thank her from the bottom of my heart for everything she did for the town and, and um, I just really appreciate it. I, I would have to echo what you say. Um, Tamoya brought so much vitality and enthusiasm and creativity to the Youth Commission. Every time I talked with her or saw her make a presentation, I, I was just um, blown away with the amount of um, just vigor and enthusiasm she brought to that board. And I know, um, you know, when she came and met with the Center School Reuse Committee for ideas for Center School, she just had so many wonderful suggestions for how, um, you know, all the programs that they could offer um, to the youth where there really are a lot of needs in our town. So she's, she's going to leave a big hole. Um, my understanding now is that there are two openings on that board and that uh, Dawn Ronan has moved in to serve as chair. But um, she's, she's going to leave a big hole and we uh, will really miss her and thank her a lot for all she's done. Okay. Uh, so, oh, yeah, if I can make a, a, yes, a motion, please, to accept. To accept. Uh, but if, uh, um, 
Okay. Yeah, I'll make the motion, then I just want to make a comment. All right. Uh, make a motion to accept the uh, resignation t uh, of uh, Tamoria Saba as a member of, and chair of the uh, uh, Hopkins Youth Commission. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Mr. Catano. Yes. Um, um, Mr. Kamalo, is it uh, possible to make, to make sure we send a, uh, a, a nice thank you note out? It's always that is standard. Yes. She will definitely get a thank you from the town. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Um, Five minutes. We have a public hearing at 7, but um, I think maybe we can move ahead. Um, the item that's scheduled for uh, 7.50 Marathon Fund Committee charge and committee appointment. Um, Mr. Kamalo, am I correct that the Marathon Fund Committee part is going to be postponed till a later meeting? It, yes, in, in fact, um, I put it on the agenda to give the board a heads up that I have been working with the Marathon Fund Committee mm -hmm. and we are almost ready to present a revised charge. Okay. And that revised charge, what you'll see in the revised charge is the reaffirmation of the purposes of the fund as recreational, athletic, wellness, and health, um, and, and well-being, health, health well-being of the community. Um, we are also um, clarifying the membership uh, based on my conversation so far with the chair and Colleen. Uh, the interest is in maintaining the membership at five. And finally, uh, based on past experience, the interest is in defining two priority areas for the fund. The first priority being the scholarship fund. Uh, I mean, when you sit down and you speak with Colleen uh, and, 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 and Carol, uh, they, are, they are always so passionate about, about that aspect of the work. So that's coming out as priority number one. And priority number two, uh, we focus on uh, acquisition of assets, tools, uh, operating costs, as well as grants that fund other activities that are related to the three main uh, purposes that I identified. So work in progress. Uh, as part of our conversations, we've also identified two areas of work. Uh, Colleen is working on developing a standard operating procedure uh, for the scholarship program. Uh, and in fact, they were, in my conversations with them, they were celebrating the participation of the selectmen's liaison in that process. And so you'll see an affirmation of, of the role of the liaison in the scholarship process. Uh, uh, Carol is also going to be working on refining the standard operating procedure for applying for the marathon fund grants. So work in progress, we're coming back to you with a revised uh, um, a charge, much more clearer on purpose and very clear also in terms of the priorities the funds are going to be applied. So do I understand correctly that when it comes to this board, we will have input into how that is, is shaped. If there are pieces of that that this board feels should be done differently, we will have an opportunity to, to discuss that at it, this meeting. Yes, and, and also individually, if board members um, you have any specific area of interest now, please let me know. Um, my conversations with Carol and Colleen uh, were based on input that we received from the prior board. Number one, there was, there was a need to clarify the purpose. Two, there was a need to uh, clarify the membership. Um, and Thirdly, we had talked about different ways of applying the funds. Uh, initially, the idea was we have a ranking system uh, um, that will um, be sequenced based on the priorities. Uh, however, what, what we have now settled on in my discussions with the Marathon Fund, Fund Committee representatives is the two bucket priorities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And, um well, there will still be a board of selectmen's liaison. It's just not 
going to be listed as one of the full members because it's a liaison, correct? And just like the, a vote randomly. Exactly. <laughs> the, the, the liaison is not, will not be listed in the charge. Correct, but it, it, will, it will exist. That will, person will be there. Correct. Just not listed as the charge. Okay, understood. Okay. No, we're not then, sure uh, that there's a spot. Uh, Mr. Herb, sorry. And if, if the board may, um, I will oh, do it on seven o'clock. If you have something to add, Mr. We no, probably the, have 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah, the appointment, so, yeah, the appointment of the uh, Council on Aging member. We have one applicant. Okay, we, we could take that immediately and do it in 30 seconds if we want to. Uh, looks like Mr. Don Wolf has applied. We have one applicant for the Council on Aging. Um, if there are questions or concerns, or we, then I think we should delay that till after the public hearing. If there's not, we can request a motion to approve. Mr. Wolf, here is you. Uh, he was uh, going to be here. You're a little ahead of schedule, so, so I know he's on his way. But. Okay. All right. Then why don't we wait? Then we'll wait. We were just kind of cleaning up. In, in the hour being seven o'clock, uh, we will open. There is a posted public hearing for tax classification. <laughs> The board will hold a public hearing to determine the percentage of local tax levy to be borne by each class of real and personal property in accordance with Chapter 40, Section 56, as certified by the Commissioner of Revenue through the Hopkinton Board of Assessors Property Assessment of Full and Fair Cash Valuation. Oral and written comments from the public will be <coughs> accepted at the hearing. And we have here to make the presentation our principal assessor, Mr. John Nees, and Mary Jo Lafreniere, who is the chairman of the Hoppington Board of Assessors. Welcome. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening. <laughs> uh, my name is John Nees. I am the Hoppington Assessor, and I have with me Mary Jo Lafreniere, who chairs the Board of Assessors. And in the audience, we have Leslie Fakari, one of the members of the board. And our third member is uh, traveling on business. So uh, Mary Jo will uh, will start and try this one. Okay. So she'll do the first part of the presentation, uh, and she'll be um, going through this classification letter, which has been provided to you in hard copy. Uh, not quite as readable here, but. Um, you have a copy and she'll go through that and highlight some of the points and then I'll take over for the rest of the PowerPoint uh, presentations. Okay. If I may, in terms of process, yes. I think we need a motion to open the public hearing. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm I'll make a motion to open the public hearing on uh, uh, tax classification. classification. Second. All right, made and seconded. All those in favor of opening the public hearing on tax classification, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. My apologies. Mayor Joe. Right. And we'll also be happy to answer any questions uh, as we go through or answer them at the end, with whatever you'd like. Well, hi, back again. <laughs> um, I just wanted to touch on, I, you've all read the letter but I wanted to touch on some points of the letter for the general public. Um, one is what is tax classification, and there are different categories of property, and you people have to decide tonight whether or not you want to classify within certain classifications or whether you want to split the rate, let's say, or classify, make a difference between the commercial industrial, the personal property, and the residential properties in town, and that would then change the tax rate. So there's an o we open space discount. Uh, we don't really uh, have much of that in town that we could apply that to. There is only one town in the state that uses that, and that's the town of Bedford. So um, residential exemption is not an exemption. Uh, like you would get if you were a senior citizen and you get an exemption for your property. This is an exemption within a class. And it is only used in a few towns in the state and it's towns that would have, uh, be able to shift the rate, with, like say within the residential class. And they would do that in like Nantucket or uh, 
Martha's Vineyard. I think we only have like 13 <coughs> towns that do that. And they're towns that have large populations of not year-round residents. And so to drop the rate for a year-round residence or a certain class of property ownership, um, the burden is then shifted to the summer residents or the higher uh, paying properties. Uh, and we are not a town that that would, that would apply to either. Uh, small commercial exemptions are for uh, commercial properties that uh, bring in less than a million dollars a year and have only 10 employees. And uh, it, it doesn't look like, and that would put the burden on the rest of the commercial industrial. You, you split within the class. So to give some commercial properties a discount, you'd be adding to other commercial industrial properties. And you know, I don't know how you feel about that, but <laughs> we, we have not done it in the past. And I, I have a feeling we probably won't do that uh, again this year. Uh, when you shift the burden, well, in Hoppington, the residential class is 84% of the valuation, and the commercial industrial personal property is 16%. And that has not really changed very much uh, in 40 years. So we are what they call a bedroom community or a residential community. And in splitting a rate between the commercial and industrial, usually, it would drop a few cents off of the residential bill to add a dollar to the commercial and industrial properties. So we will look at that. John has it in the PowerPoint and, and uh, different, different percentages of change. We, we do have that with us. Uh, just some information for people. Uh, the town is now almost worth $4 billion, it's 3.9 plus, and the average um, taxpayer family bill went from 5.715 to 5.995. So we are increasing about 5% in properties. Some properties will increase more. Those who have, you know, put on an addition or done a major renovation or that sort of thing will we'll find a bigger than 5% increase in their properties. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, <laughs> we are just growing at leaps and bounds, and you have, I think, everything else that you need in front of you. I, the top 10 taxpayers are here, and, and the valuations are, are there. And like I said, we have an 84 16 split, and when I was the clerk in the assessor's office, it was an 84 16 split. I won't tell you how many years ago that was, but uh, we, Hoppington has not changed that much in, in many years. And, it, and John has looked at the last five years and it has been pretty much the same split. So even with the growth, we've had as much growth in residential as we have in uh, personal, commercial and, per, and personal property. So. I think that's all I have to say tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just a few more slides. Any questions before I continue? Or? Okay. Please. Right, so the uh, proposed tax rate for fiscal year 2019 is $17.17 .17 per thousand of valuation. That's an increase from the current rate of $16.90 per thousand. And that would be a single tax rate for all classes of property. Uh, in general, the different classes of property increased from 2 to 10 percent, uh, plus or minus. Uh, statistically, uh, in the last year, single families with about a 5 percent increase, commercial property with a 9.5 percent increase, and industrial property with a 1.5 percent increase. Uh, we do remind you that statistics are somewhat deceiving uh, because of what Mary Jo has mentioned. So. Uh, these, these rates can change dramatically if someone uh, has put on a significant addition to the house uh, or done some substantial renovations. And there are also reasons such as natural disaster when uh, property can go down in value as well. This just uh, shows it in a little bit of a, a pie chart, but uh, this shows the 84% 
uh, of the town in the residential class, and then the other three categories are commercial, industrial, and personal property, uh, which make up the other 16% of value. This chart from fiscal year 2011 through fiscal year 2019 show the increase in value in Hopkinton uh, of a single family assessment over that period of time. And this chart shows the, too fast? And this chart shows the uh, increase uh, from the same period of time, fiscal year 2011 through fiscal year 2019 of the uh, average single family tax bill over that period of time. This compares the town of Hopkinton with uh, some of the other towns that are either uh, geographically contiguous to us or demographically uh, similar to Hopkinton. Uh, we are very similar to uh, the town of Southboro in terms of a, this is fiscal year of 2018 when all of the tax rates uh, have been set and the average tax bills have been computed, but very similar to the town of Southboro, actually a little higher than the towns of Holliston and Westboro. Uh, and uh, lower than the town of Medfield in terms of an average tax bill. And this shows um, a scenario uh, if you decide to split the rate. Uh, essentially, um, for every 1% differential uh, in lowering the residential tax rate, you increase the tax rate for uh, commercial, industrial, and personal property by 5%. So if you decrease the residential rate by 1%, you've got a 5% increase. If you follow the chart along and you, in, you decrease the residential rate by the 5% number, uh, you've increased the commercial, industrial, and property class bill uh, by 25%. And we do have some actual dollar figures for that if, uh, if you want a further explanation of that. This shows the excess levy capacity from fiscal year 2011 through fiscal year 2019. 419, approximately 1.9 or almost $2 million. And um, whatever questions you might have in a minute, we would be happy to answer. But you do have to um, make a motion and take a vote on whether or not you want an open space discount or not. Uh, whether you want a residential exemption or not, whether you want a small commercial exemption or not, and whether you will have a single tax rate or a split tax rate. Uh, after um, all of that is finished, I will be leaving the LA-5 options and certification uh, page with Elaine. I'm going to leave her two copies of the same form, and at the end of your meeting tonight, you are going to sign that form, which then has to be submitted to uh, Division of Local Services to proceed with setting the tax rate. Mr. Dees, can you explain for the people watching at home how that tax rate this year, 17, uh, 17 is arrived at? I can. It's a, a very simple calculation where we take effectively the $3.9 plus billion dollars of property value uh, that uh, Mary Jo has suggested and we also take the um, amount of money from the tax rate recap that we have to budget. Um, so you have a particular budget number and then that is offset by whatever the town might receive in, I don't know, ambulance fees, state aid, building permits, whatever. Uh, and then I believe it's some 68 million that we actually have to raise in taxes. Um, I can find the exact number if you want from the recap sheet, but uh, we divide one by the other and that simply tells us that the tax rate is $17.17. Not to go on too long, but people think that the assessors set the tax rate, but we do not. Uh, it's really a combination of what the budget is or what right. the town has decided through town meeting that they have to raise and what the value of the town is in total of all of the classes. Yep. Because according to what you presented tonight, um, I th think you said 70% of our, of our funds have to come from our tax dollars, so. About 70% of the budget. 70, <laughs> 70. Um, well, I know that, you know, in the, in the few years that I've been on the board, the, you know, you said we've got 84, 16, we always talked about an 80, 20, but actually in reality, it's even less than 80, 20, it's 84, 16. And, um, you know, I think 
in previous years, and, and you said going way back, the town's always wanted to try to encourage businesses. We're not really known for having a big commercial base, but a commercial base does help the town in terms of you know not demanding a lot in town services and giving a lot back. So, um, you know, I think that in previous years we we have not voted to have a dual tax rate, but rather a single for that reason that we do want to send the right message that we are a town that's welcoming the business community and w would like to grow that base. Um, and, and I and I think that those those charts that you showed that showed the the blue and the orange bar graph really illustrate very well that the temptation to shift some of the tax burden to somebody else, it has to get made up somewhere. You still, you still have to come up with the same amount of money either way. So you buy a little bit on one side, it means somebody else has to carry more of the burden. And then you look at the, at the ramifications or the negatives of that. And um, you know, I think that's, that's the reason in the past we've always decided to, to maintain the single. That's, a, that's exactly right. And I just, you know, we use the word exemption in places, but it, it does not exempt anybody from a tax. It's just shifted to someone else or some other part of the community. I'd also like to tell the board, if I could, that uh, we do uh, write different articles and publish them on the website. Uh, one is to explain the recertification process to the residents. Uh, the other one is the process in setting the tax rate, and the third one is uh, um, how to file for a real estate tax abatement if they think their property is overvalued and a copy of the application. Those will not be available on the website until closer to the end of the year because a couple of the articles do include a chart that compares the tax rate for last year and this year uh, in Hopkinton with several other towns and since we are at this point early in the process a lot of those tax rates still haven't been set but those will be posted to the website for the residents uh, as soon as they're available. Can you also explain what exemptions or abatements are available for seniors? We can. I'll sure. <laughs> well we, we have a clause 41C for seniors and it is um, they're statewide they're not necessarily the amount is particular to the town because it can be voted increased or decreased at a town meeting however the applications and the rules and regulations for the abatement are statewide and uh, so it's a based on income and basic and age and the amount of time you lived in the community and um, you, when you fill out the application it's, it's pretty self-explanatory and then you are entitled to I think Hoppington was at 1,000 and I think it went to 1,500 mm -hmm. at the, the last town meeting so you that will be taken right off the tax bill if you're qualified all the applications come to the Board of Assessors they go through each one individually and uh, it's voted on whether or not they meet all the criteria then there's also uh, veterans uh, exemption which is a portion and that all depends on you have a certificate from the Veterans Association or from the military of a percent of disability the minimum is 10 percent and you can have up to 100 percent of disability in which case all your taxes would be uh, exempted and each one there are different classes is Purple Heart there's there's a, a number of classes that have different amounts of exemption attached to them. We are reimbursed by the state for a certain amount. Um, there is also a widow widower's exemption and that is based on income alone and uh, and you know that can you just have to produce the death certificate etc and the spouse must have been deceased by July 1 of the previous fiscal year. Um, we have a <laughs> we have a blind exemption for the blind people, and they have a certificate from the state of blindness, a particular certificate they have to present, uh, and that is uh, also uh, I think that's five hundred or a thousand. I'm I'm not used to be five hundred. I'm not sure. We also have what they call a tax deferral program, and we did vote on a few of those earlier tonight at our meeting. Uh, and that is for people who, who cannot financially pay their taxes. And uh, they have to show uh, bank accounts and certain records and all, all kinds of information. Uh, 
and whether or not they can defer their, their taxes, which means they will not pay it. However, at some point in the future when the estate is sold or uh, they, the person becomes deceased, then the town gets the property back, with, uh, gets the tax money back with interest. And I think the interest is either 4 to 8% all the way back. But these people also, what I, what I wanted to let them know is that if they qualify for the elderly exemption or any of the other exemptions, and they apply for it and they get that, that is deducted first. And then they defer the rest of the taxes. Uh, and th that's how it, so they have to apply for all of the exemptions that they're entitled to. There's a hardship uh, exemption that's, uh, you have to have meet three criteria. I think it's age, infirmity, and financial condition. And uh, there are also many financial requirements. And uh, like I said, it's, it's a age and infirmity that also have to be brought before the board for decision on that particular one. And then we also have the tax relief or the tax relief committee. And people have to make their, I'm also on that as the liaison from the Board of Assessors, and they have to fill out the application and uh, make their presentation to the Tax Relief Committee, in which case that amount can fluctuate uh, because it's based on money that is given to the town by townspeople to be used for tax relief for someone else. And uh, different years, we've been lucky with different amounts uh, that have been donated. And we're not al allowed to solicit money. So, you know, are the, some years we have done $500, some years we've done $200. It depends on how much money is, is there in the account at that season when we give out that money. And I mean, obviously the deferral, that's a one-time application and the tax relief is every year. The other exemptions, do those have to be applied for each year? All of them have to, even the deferral. You oh, we I, have I, to know, that's a way of knowing whether or not a person has deceased or something that the state has to allow, let us know each year. Uh, we, that is, that yep. is done with a, there's a lien put on the property, however, by the town. Mr. Marlowe, you have a question. Yeah, through the chair. Um, in, in May 2017 and also in 2018, um, we processed the means tested senior property tax exemption through annual town meeting and through the state legislature, respectively. Could you speak to where that is now? That will be in uh, next year's, now it has to be set up. So it will be set up for next year's tax. So that will not apply in this year. It will not apply for cycle. this year. We did not, we, it didn't go through the legislature and we did not have time to do the setup for that particular program. So we will be working on that as soon as the tax bill, this year's taxes are taken care of. We might, I didn't want, uh, yeah, Mr. No. Nice, we, we might also just say uh, that all of the information that the chair has discussed uh, is available through our administrative assistant for the residents and he is very good about helping the residents understand what exemptions they might qualify for and what type of document documentation they may need to provide. And just one last note, we are in uh, the process of preparing. So all of this information is readily available now, but we are in the process of preparing what we're calling a senior solutions notebook Great. that will have copies of all of these regulations uh, from, from the statute and copies of all of the applications uh, as a document for the senior center to have as well. And that administrative assistant's name is? Uh, that's Stuart Carter. Stuart Carter. Stuart Carter, mm -hmm. great. It's sometimes wonderful just to have a person to go to. So um, I didn't mean to overtake the discussion, but I felt that the, this was information I wanted to make sure the public heard. Um, other board members, Mr. Sure. Gattino. Um, uh, Leslie, uh, John, Mary Jo, thank you very much for coming. It's, it's, it's great to have the, the graphs and the explanations uh, behind them so people can understand really what's going on. Um, and thank you for, for talking about all of the exemptions and, 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 the, and the aid that people can get from taxes. And, and, but I think the, the most telling sign is, is a um, uh, graphic is the one that's up there now showing the, uh, the orange and the red 
the same one that you mentioned, Claire, yeah, yeah. that uh, many times people say, geez, you know, we should have the businesses pay more. They're making money here. They should pay more money. But to see that when we only have 16%, to see that if we, to, to offset, to basically to offset last year's tax increase of 5%, businesses would be paying 25% more, and that's no way to attract businesses to the town. Yeah, uh, earlier this morning, I was at the uh, chamber um, uh, board meeting where they um, uh, passed a motion supporting a, a single tax rate, just simply because of uh, that slide right there. The dual tax rate works great in a community like Chelsea that is almost more than 50% more than commercial. Yeah. And, uh, you know, very little residential, because even some of the residentials are income pro producing property. So it, that's, where it works, it works just the opposite of what we're seeing here in, in a residential community. Yes, uh, I'm all set. Yes. Mr. Nursrilla. Thank you for coming. Um, appreciate the explanation since uh, it's very instructive to me. Uh, one question I had on the elderly exemptions. Is, are any of these, um, if somebody just discovers that they're uh, that they qualify, would they be able to apply retroactively for a previous year where they didn't didn't do it? Mm. No. I, we don't go back in assessing or in in any of these things. Um, you know, it's it's like if your house was assessed and you had we had made a mistake, put down ten for bathrooms instead of one, <laughs> instead of one. It it'll show up right away, and you you are expected to apply for an abatement and you know, expected to know. So you can get a copy of your property record card from, from the town and, and whatnot. And the same thing with exemptions. Uh, the exemptions are there, they're, they're out there, they're, we notify people. In fact, Stuart is very good. What we do is we actually send the application to people who have received it in the past to see if they, they want to qualify again this year. Uh, and we try to get it on the tax bill before the tax bill comes out so that they have the discount right off immediately and don't have to you know, pay extra and then have it uh, reduced on another bill later on. So um, we do everything we can to, to, get the, to get the word out on exemptions. Stuart goes to the senior center and someone goes every year and speaks to them there. and. Uh, you know, it's on the website, it's, and it's in every town. Yeah. Different amounts, but the fact that there are exemptions are in every town. Excellent. Um, one other question I had with regard to open space. Um, what exactly, are we, are we talking about a person who owns, like, let's say I own 10 acres, but eight of it is wetlands and unusable, and I can't use it. Is that, when we talk about the open space exemption, is that something where, um, that unusable land would be exempted or taxed at a different rate. You want to take this one? Sure. Or, or even, you know, if I were to, I owned 10 acres and I gave eight of it to the Conservation Commission under a conservation restriction, is that what we're talking about? This is, um, this a, is a little hard to explain briefly, but, okay. uh, but basically, um, Basically, we don't have any open space in Hopkinton with the exception of land that we classify as open space, which was required to be set aside by the planning board when a new subdivision was established. <coughs> so when the planning board made a determination on the subdivision, they asked the developer to set aside some of the land in that subdivision as so-called open space. But it doesn't receive a tax discount, but by virtue of being unbuildable, uh, it is taxed at a reduced rate. So a class 130 is developable land, uh, 131 is potentially developable, and 132 is undevelopable, so it would be at a 132 class, so it is at, at a reduced factor. 
Um, and maybe toward your question a little bit, we use uh, what we call a prime site in Hopkinton for valuation of the, of the building site. And then any land over and above that we treat as excess land. So the prime site is a price per acre so that a prime site, might, might, a residential site might have a value of a quarter of a million dollars, but the um, excess land is priced at $10,000 an acre. So three acres of excess land would be valued at $30,000 rather than three times the prime site, for example. I don't know if that Understood. sort of addresses what you're asking. It does, absolutely does. Thank you very much. Thank you. So um, a question, I liked your presentation. I like presentations that are strictly factual. There's no CNN versus Fox News spin on it. It's strictly factual. <laughs> so, um, and I like that. A question I have on exemptions. Um, can they piggyback off each other? So a senior, uh, disabled veteran who's blind? Only some of them. Okay. Not, not all of them are allowed to piggyback. Veterans okay. can sometimes piggyback off of, off of another okay, exemption. But, apply for, but uh, applying a for one doesn't wife, preclude them from another. And they're both veterans. That household can get both exemptions. Yeah, mo most common, I think, would be someone who has an exemption but also gets the, the CPA exemption. Yeah, you do get the, you can get the, if you have one, you can, and, and if you have an elderly one, you can get the CPA exemption also. Or an exemption and also some relief from the tax relief committee. Yeah, so you can get that. There's a couple of examples. There's a couple, a couple of things that can be piggyback on each other. So I like how Hopkinton took the stance that they wanted to uh, look out for their seniors and their veterans at, at our last town meeting. And, and uh, when it comes in, you actually see in real numbers, uh, Makes me appreciate the, the work that the town has done, you guys as well as us, as well as the townspeople, to, to uh, stand behind our seniors and our veterans. Uh, they're kind of the, the fabric of our, of our town, and, and uh, I appreciate that. So that's all I have. I would just echo what Mr. Ted Stone said. I think um, a great job is always presenting, and I, I, would just, I believe it's the single tax rate is the way to go. Um, but I would just sort of reaffirm what you were just talking about, you know, we have a lot of different tools in place that hopefully we can use, and the town of Hockington broadly wants to use those tools to help those people that need the help. So I don't think there's a stigma attached to coming to see the Board of Assessors on Mr. Neese at all. If people are feeling that there's some kind of awkwardness about it, or they're uncomfortable about it, or they, whatever, and they don't want to do something, reach out to one of us, and we have a help you with that process and introduce you to the right people. Um, but I think that those exemptions are there for good reasons. And people that have served our community, our state, our country so well in all kinds of different capacities, whether it's just the, the number of years they've been here and helping uh, in town, or they served in the military, or whatever the case may be, I just really wish they would come forward and take advantage of these opportunities uh, to help, that we all want to help. The residents of Hopkinton want to help people that need the help. And with that, uh, I, guess I just think we should proceed with the tax rate. Yep. Um, yeah, the tax rate and the budget is probably the principal issue that we deal with every single year. And, um, you know, it's always a concern for the tax burden on the citizens, particularly some of our citizens who are not uh, as well situated as others. So I think it's very important to know what those options are. And I also noticed, and it's not a surprise, it's in keeping with our projections, but in your um, summary letter to the board mentioning the new growth um, for F FY 2019 as anticipated is down. Uh, it is, it is uh, 2,219,652 um, projected as opposed to last year, 2,789,465 in tax dollars. So that is down by a half million dollars. And so, you know, we need to be aware of the pressures across the board that are gonna be on our budget. We've looked in other years for help from that new growth and our costs are increasing and, you know, we're, we're valuing the new growth, but it's not at the same level that it was in another year, so that's something everybody needs to, needs to be aware of because the bills still need to be paid. Um, if the board has all had their chance to weigh in, this being a public hearing, uh, we also uh, would like to take public comments, if there are any. I don't, 
I'm not aware we've received anything in writing. I have not seen that in our packet, but if there are oral comments or questions from the public at this time, I would certainly invite them. Okay. Done. Hearing none. An easy subject. Uh, subject. Uh, you can't get away from it. <laughs> All right, hearing none, um, we have four items that we need to make a decision on. The first is the open space exemption. So I would ask if there is a motion to... Close the hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. Again, I need to close the public hearing first. Is there a motion to close the public so hearing? So moved. Second. All right, made and seconded to close the public hearing. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, that is unanimous. Okay, the first thing is whether we would like to, we have not before, but grant the, an open space exemption. So I would ask if anyone would like to make a motion to grant an open space exemption. I move, I'd like to make a motion that we do not grant an open <coughs> space exemption. Second. Okay, we have a negative motion to not grant an open space exemption. All those in favor of not granting any open space exemption, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous, so there will be no open space exemption granted for FY19. Would we like to begin the process of granting a residential exemption? If so, would someone like to make a motion? I move, I'd like to make a motion. I move to not grant the residential exempt, uh, exemption. Second. Motion has been made and seconded that we not grant a residential tax exemption. All those in favor of not granting the residential exemption, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. So there will be no residential exemption. Thirdly, would we wish to grant a small commercial exemption? These are all things that haven't been done before. Um, I would request a motion on, on that subject. Madam Chair, I, I, uh, I move to not grant a small commercial exemption. Second. All right, motion has been made and seconded that the board not grant a small commercial exemption. All those in favor of not granting a small commercial exemption, please say aye. 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 And opposed. All right, that's unanimous, so there is no small commercial exemption granted. Um, and this will be a motion to approve a single tax rate for FY19. In other words, there will be no split rate with a different rate for businesses from residential. All will pay the same rate, which I believe Mr. Nee says will be set at 1717. Well, it's still subject to uh, Department of Revenue approval, okay. but based on all the statistics we have, that should be the rate. Okay. But we're not voting on the rate anyway. We're just voting on whether we, we stick with a single rate. So would somebody like to make a motion? I'd like to make that motion for a single tax rate for this upcoming fiscal year. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to maintain a single tax rate in the town of Hopkinton for FY19. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. We will continue with the single tax rate. And the final motion, I request a motion to sign the LA-5 form for the Department of Revenue. So moved. Second. Made and seconded to sign the LA-5. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. The LA-5 form will be signed and thank you very much coming this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We're ahead of schedule. Nicely done. We are a little ahead of schedule, but not too much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the appointment. Yeah. Is Mr. Wolf here now? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Then we will go back to the appointment. Uh, on the Council of Aging, we have Mr. Don Wolf, who has applied to serve. If you want to come up, we're glad you're here, and we're glad you've, you've um, volunteered. Welcome. Thank you. Tell it's us a little about yourself and uh, why you want to be on the Council of Aging. We sure could use some new members. Okay. <clears throat> so I've been in Hopkinton since uh, 1998, and January of this year, I made the decision 
I retired from, well, I'm semi-retired, but I retired from a 40-year career in consumer goods, working for companies like uh, Gillette, Procter & Gamble, and Henkel. Um, basically found that it was just taking way too much of my time, and the pressures of, you know, it's changed so much with all the financial laws that have changed over the years. So I just made a decision we could afford to do that, and uh, I'm still working, um, but just part-time at the Target in Westboro. And so I look at it and, you know, this is my chance to give back to the community. And so there's a number of different volunteer endeavors that I'm working on. Uh, one of them is the Hopkinton Senior Center. I started working with Amy. Um, I first volunteered in the uh, kitchen, and that really wasn't my forte. Um, <laughs> and so I did that for a couple of times. It's good you went on board ship. They probably all agreed. <laughs> so, um, my conversations with Amy, you know, I basically said, you know, what can I do to help you out? And one of the things that we had talked about was creating a trail program to um, kind of uh, mirror, mirror what Southboro's doing. And so I started working on that. And so we've had two events so far, uh, one at Hopkinton State Park and one where we did a tour from the senior center up to the town common uh, with the members of the Hopkinton Historical Society. Uh, basically narrating and talking about the history of Hopkinton. So this thing came up with the volunteer on the Council on Aging and I said sure I mean I've got time uh, I want to give back to the community I'm still working on, on a number of other volunteer um, you know positions that I'm working on but I can definitely you know fit it into my schedule I meet once a month um, I've already started talking to Amy about some other things you know I think there's definitely opportunities to uh, build uh, the things that the senior center can do and the outreach to people that are probably on the cusp of becoming seniors and to me it's just you know my way of uh, giving back i think it's great and it sounds like you've already been bitten a little by the volunteer bug so i like to i like to hear that um, and we, sh we need some, uh, some new enthusiasm and some new ideas. And so I'm, I think it's great that you've, you've stepped up to volunteer. Um, we really appreciate it. Other board members, any questions for Mr. Wolf? No, Sounds okay. great. I'm sorry. Mr. Catano. I'm sorry. Uh, Don, thank you very much for stepping forward. This is, the, it's, it's great having somebody like you. We, we, were, we, we were just going to uh, accept you in, um, in the, in the consent agenda, but um, uh, the chair said, oh, let's wait, because we heard that you were coming, and now I'm so glad. It, yeah. you know, what, what a, uh, uh, a wonderful story, and, and, and how you came about to uh, uh, this, uh, uh, requesting this position. I think that you'd be a perfect fit, and you know, there's, uh, there are some other committees, too. If you've got <laughs> extra energy, we've got, we've got other committees that have openings, too. Wow, this is great. Actually, I looked at the, when I applied for this position, I kind of looked at it on the uh, site. I mean, there's a couple things that definitely pique my interest. I'm, I'm an ex-sales guy, and I'm not afraid to knock on doors. I'm not afraid to ask for things. And, I mean, I actually talked to Amy about that and said, what do you need? It's like, uh, I'm not bashful. Um, one of the other things I did um, while I was still working is I did um, run the Boston Marathon three times uh, as a, um, uh, basically not as qualifying, but I did it for charity. And I raised uh, on my own around over $40,000. Uh, and then when I didn't want to run any further, I uh, created a, a P&G Boston Marathon team. And together, the team that I created, we raised over $100,000 more on top of the $40,000 I had raised. So um, that's one thing. It's like if people have an interest in someone that can get things done, I do have time available. I'm actually uh, have taken less hours at Target. They started scheduling me at 40 hours. I just wanted to, you know, work, you know, and do like cashiering and everything like that. They put me in a supervisory role, and I'm going. I really don't want to do this. You know, I, don't want, I don't want the hours a week. I want like 20 to 24 just to be out there and you know keep my. You know, it's great because I'm you know uh, greeting guests and everything like that. But really, my heart <clears throat> is on doing things to help the community, uh, and you know. Hopkinton is centermost in that. So, you know, if there's things that uh, you guys help need help with, 
you know, I'm interested in, you know, uh, you know, of course, senior center comes first, but, you know, I will have other things that uh, I can offer as well. Volunteering happens the same way. You just, oh, I was just going to do this, but then you end up doing about 10 things. Mr. Kilduff and Mr. Hur are definitely going to want to be talking to you after this, after your, <laughs> this meeting. Mr. Hur is a big... <laughs> <laughs> Got his number already, Tim? <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you coming. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, I'm going to tell you, we almost whipped through this at 7 o'clock, and I'm so glad we didn't, <clears throat> didn't die because you were definitely worth the wait. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I would like to request a motion to appoint Mr. Don Wolf to a position on the Council of Aging, and that is, let's see, uh, Mr. Kamal, this doesn't say when that expires, you know? Hey, I don't think we June have thirtieth, two thousand and nineteen. I'd have it expire. June of twenty nine. <laughs> so it's a one year. Okay, June thirtieth of twenty nineteen. Okay, expiring June thirtieth, twenty nineteen. Uh, uh, would someone like to uh, make that motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. All right, made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And oppose. It is unanimous. And thank you very much for stepping up. Thanks, Don. Thanks very much, Don. Thank board. Thank you, Don. So, we're a little ahead of time, but that's all right. It's not a public hearing. Um, <coughs> our next item on the agenda would be the uh, performance evaluation and goals discussion and action for the fire chief, the police chief, and the town manager. The Board of Selectmen will consider the fiscal year 18 annual review and discuss the prospective FY19 goals for the town manager, the police chief, and the fire chief. Um, well, I think we'll do the town manager at the end and let the fire chief and the police chief get out a little early because I think they've had a kind of a rough week <laughs> and some long nights, especially the fire chief. Steve, would you like to come up first? You haven't had much sleep this week. <laughs> so, um, all the board members have a copy of uh, materials that are provided by Maria of Human Resources. And I think first, let's just, okay, let's see what I've got here go over a quick review of the goals that were set for last year for the fire chief. Um, I'm reading the right thing here. Are those the ones this, dated 6 30, 17? Uh, Wait a minute, Maria, why does this say 17? Th those are the ones for last year. Yeah. <clears throat> But would, but were really they oh, they, they were initiated then, but they expired June thirtieth of eighteen. Right, and that's what you're evaluating. Right, right. I was confused by seeing it say seventeen. I thought it would say June thirtieth, eighteen. Okay. Um, oh, you're correct, Claire. Eighteen. It should say eighteen. It should. Okay. All right. Now I'm not confused anymore. <laughs> I think is that the case with it's the case with all of them. Okay, yeah. but it means it, we're really talking eighteen. Okay, um, Fire Chief, for those at the public listening, had three goals. The first was a joint goal with the town manager and the fire chief in community preparedness. The second was to facilitate a review of our current response model with the in intention of answering the question of needs and location options of a second staffed fire station and three, continue with development through experience, mentoring, and education. Work with stakeholders in the creation of a career development plan that focuses on experience, mentoring, and education. The remainder of FY18, success in this plan would deliver clearly indicated growth opportunities along with associated motivational programs, which ultimately allow for the delegation of significant assignments which positively impact the organization's mission. So it is community preparedness, uh, planning for a second station, and uh, continue with um, employee development. And um, I know we have uh, Chief Slammons reporting on this. Um, 
Does the board have questions or comments on um, the previous, the previous? Uh, and the text to the right of those dates is the text or feedback from the chief himself, correct? On the form <coughs> right here. These Far right. Yeah. yeah Far right, right corner. Here, yeah. Um, it's probably a, a combination of a few. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Let's see. Okay. To the chair, you know, chair chief, you know, it, it, it's, you're, you're very humble uh, writing good first steps uh, working with the, um, the police department, the fire department, on, this, on your, your, your joint um, community preparedness. You know, I saw some of the initial uh, reports that you put out, and they are so thorough. I mean, you know, setting up, uh, setting up everything for the, for, the, for the citizens of Hopkinton as well as, as, well as uh, community uh, officials and everything else, it's, it was way over the top. I, that's, that's what I wrote. It was so much more than, than um, I ever expected for, for what you're calling a first pass. I have no idea what you're going to be doing. You know, <laughs> if, you, if you're calling that report and everything that you put out a first pass, Wow, we're in for some good stuff. I, I thought that was a uh, well done. We still need a drone. I'm sorry. We, we, we still need a drone. A drawing. Drone? A drone. Oh, a drone. <laughs> you get me every time on my drone. If, if, if I may, um, you know, I, I think that you know, the chief has done a great job in all these goals, and some of these goals um, are joint goals, and they're not goals that are going to be all established or met at one time. We understand, um, for instance, the second fire station location and the community preparedness. All, all of these are ongoing things. Um, uh, chief, could you just kind of explain for the town a little bit some of the community preparedness work you've done? this year. Um, I know that was a big concern of mine and it sure. seemed to be a goal that most of the board members shared. Um, yep. So um, I, you know, we work with the uh, Hawkins Emergency Management Group on a regular basis anyways. I got together with uh, Chief Lee and Mr. Kamalo and we did a little review of what we've done over the past two years as a group. Um, I just uh, let them see some of the material that I get as emergency management director. Um, one of the structures we saw right away is FEMA does a lot of work for national preparedness already. So we all reviewed the template and we said, you know, this is the model for the task that we've been assigned. Um, we agreed it would be a great uh, resource for us. Uh, we brought it to, um, had a couple meetings of the emergency management group where we reviewed the topics that uh, FEMA outlines and preparedness and we came up with a plan on how each of our groups would push out preparedness so it kind of opened up with you know chief lee's national preparedness night uh night out uh at the uh common um we brought in the um massachusetts um uh, Office of Disabilities in, which uh, trained our group. We brought in some of the senior center representatives and we learned about um, preparedness for people with disabilities and we got some emergency kits that they put together that we can offer out. We talked to some of our veterans about these kits and just started to, t you know, try to build relationships so that people would um, um, accept help, learn how to work with others and their neighbors and kind of that initial have a plan, get an emergency kit together, just real basic steps. But um, in many of the events that we face, that's what will get you through them. So we took that plan between the three of us and pushed it out. Um, we kind of keyed on FEMA's um, National Preparedness Month. I worked a lot with uh, other members like uh, IT. Josh did a little bit of social media stuff with us, worked on the new town website and pages to make sure we were integrated together and getting the messages out. Um, worked with the Board of um, Health. They're doing some reviews on MRCs and any other type of pieces that, you know, we're doing some evaluations right now. We didn't address the drones. I'm sorry, John, you're going to be mad. But anyways, but, the, you know, trying to discover what you can do with tools like that. 
and being prepared for emergencies is the theme. So all of those topics fit. You have a dialogue, you prioritize it. We did the simple things within the community to get out. Um, and then we trained ourselves so that we were talking to the community in the same language. Great. And I believe that's ongoing. There's going to be more. I mean, that's not a completed project. Sure. Yet. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a community preparedness. It's a risk reduction philosophy that you're trying to do forever. We should be evaluating mm -hmm. all the uh, pieces that we do, everything from wearing a seatbelt or having a helmet on for you with your kids riding a bike, sure. and how can we expand it out to the community, whether, you know, at the local level we look at our hazard mitigation planning. We're just about to review that. It's in its middle piece this year. Um, we, we are working with the state right now currently um, reviewing our ESEMPT, which is the uh, comprehensive emergency management plan at the local level for our town. Mm -hmm. They're tying into GIS and bringing in some technology. So that's just, you know, I, I talk with Mr. Kamalo all the time. It's just kind of ongoing stuff that we do. We work with our neighbors, <coughs> the LNG plant, some of the utilities, um, all our critical facilities in town that we really at the beginning need to keep operational or if they are not, it will really drag on everybody else. Yeah. So I, I hope that's. Yeah, I mean, you know, this was part of one of the goals last year anyway. And then I think um, just bringing it right home, the stuff that happened in March where you had, you know, large segments of the town that were really without power and without assistance for a number of days really brought it home the need um sure. you know for the citizenry to have these basic uh, know about this basic preparedness and you know maybe going forward i'd like to see you know m more community outreach way ways to get directly to people rather than people having to go look for it um yeah, and just the theme of having a plan and having an emergency kit so that you know i know it sounds so basic but yeah. If that's all we focused on in September, yeah. and, it, and I know it seems basic, but when you yeah. get caught, you realize that you yeah. don't. You know, um, we all get caught some, and we all we've worked with our own employees yep. this year <clears throat> to say, "Are you prepared so you can stay and help us serve others?" And that's right. and it's um, it's something you just keep building on and keep reinforcing the message. So the answer is yes to yeah. your. We need to keep this on going constantly yeah. or the system breaks down. And it's got to be stuff that people have ahead of time because you don't wait until the power goes out to say, I'm going to go online to look up what they told me I should do because, you know, and it's stuff like food and water and a heat source and, you know, that real basic stuff that people should should know what they need to have um, and, and be prepared today, not when not when the event happens. But um, and, and I will turn to other board members, but uh, the other the uh, I mean, you've done a great job on the motivation on the staff preparedness I mean the staff um, employee enhancement and we've seen that just throughout the year in the number of new hires you've made and the quality of these people that just keeps going up and up and up uh, which is just beyond what one years ago would have thought were qualifications for that position you've just expanded that and I think you've clearly um, brought in a culture and change the culture within, uh, and, and that will carry forward, certainly as long as you're there as that influence. Um, the second fire station, can you give us an update on you know, some of the planning on that? We're, we're, that's still in the nascent stage, but uh, what can you report to the town? Sure, so basically we used some initial data that we had and drew from. I worked with the IT department um, and they took three years worth of our response data and we passed that along to a, um, Mr. Kamalo and I met with um, a gentleman that, uh, from the Carlson Group that I met at a conference that does some assessments like this and they have some software that helps assist us um, understand where our um, request for service layout in the town, what our response modeling is with the existing model and um, we, we saw some of that in the Ashley and Hopkinton piece and uh, we, we ran some of our data which confirms and then shows some of the new growth how it actually laid out. Uh, just briefly, um, it kind of did what we know but you need to have the data support it. We know that we have an area down in East Hopkinton uh, between Legacy and Clinton Street, some of the new development that's a new hot zone. Um, we have an area down at Lumber and West Main that is a hot zone that is expanded. 
And then the neat thing is we keep confirming that downtown Hopkinton is our largest draw request for service. And, um, and that's why whoever picked where the fire station is a while ago did a really nice job. It yeah. literally, so the next step is we did with the modeling is we start to plug different fire station locations into the community to see whether there would be an improvement in uh, service delivery. So we did, we've done about five runs and we're trying a few more right now based on the results from those five runs. There was no area outside of downtown that gave this magical improvement to service. Many of the areas get a, um, an impact of about 20% improvement for the initial response group. They would, they would uh, beat Main Street to an area. So um, it's not a bad number, but it's not a, a number that says, wow, just rush to these areas. So, but we actually noticed that when they take the three zones that I talked about, they tend to be more central. So we probably need to look at something um, not too, too far away from Main Street. Mm -hmm. So that there is some overlap when Main Street's busy, but how it does hit some of the other areas um, effectively. So that's what we're searching for right now. Yeah. Good. And then just kind of one final piece of my last goal with the, in, the, the new employees you mentioned, and you actually described it very well for me, but um, you know, awesome. I, awesome. I'll give uh, Maria sitting next to me. We did a lot of work knowing this was gonna happen two years ago. We sat down and reviewed what we have for a hiring process. We sat down and developed how we were gonna hire in this 18 month period. And I'm happy with our results that you know, we've just stuck to the script and worked hard. And when it was not uh, getting all the input we wanted, we worked harder and yeah. tried to see if we could improve it. And um, knock on wood, I'm really happy with the results so far. It gets a little more challenging each year. The pool right now is not deep with people ready to do the level of work <coughs> that we want them to do initially. So, um, but that facilitated us to really work the system we had. We put everything together from job description to hiring practice to what we do with each of the new candidates, explaining to them we want to help get you from orientation to understanding the contract, to understanding your future is promotional uh, potential. And we've taken each uh, candidate, and as we get through our first year, we do a post meeting with them and ask, and, we've been hearing nothing but praise on improvement yeah. of the system. Yeah. So that, that's just good feedback we've had. We've talked to the mentors in, that are part of our group and, um, and the stakeholders inside the station and just, and, uh, and I'm just, I feel the atmosphere of that we're making a positive impact is uh, stationwide. Absolutely. And my impression of the new people that you brought in is that they're enthusiastic and they're ready to learn and they want to grow. And so you don't have a staff that's kind of you know, ossified into place and doesn't want to expand their horizons. They're, they're willing sure. to learn and that's what you want. It's fertile, fertile ground for advancement yep. and professional development. And just Max had his first two days and I heard nothing but he spent two days just acclimating with everybody and working hard and they look forward to um, making a new employee feel comfortable with what he's about to face because he could face everything we dealt with last week yep. right away on the first day. So Absolutely. It's, been, it's been a success story. Absolutely. Other board members, questions, comments on goals? So I have a, a couple of things. So um, the second fire station, in your professional opinion, Chief, you said 20% of the calls at those locations beat the Main Street location to the, 20% of the calls beat, you know, would, would time-wise would favor those locations. Sure, let me just, so that's kind of the first analysis. I don't want to get you too yep. far ahead because we're writing a report, yep. but that's kind of the first hit that we had. Okay, yep. so have you thought, and I'm sure that you have, um, have you thought about uh, uh, comparing a second station versus expanding the station that we have now? Yeah, we're, a part of this is to assess the existing station. Um, Again, not to get ahead of the study, it's, there's probably gonna be some more emphasis on that, but I don't wanna get ahead of the study. I talked to a lot about it with the assessor and as we did our first review, and we're checking out some more areas. Um, you know, we spent some time looking at like 80 South Street yep. um, when that building was uh, available to review. 
and um, it's just the the run we're doing right now is more down by West Main and 495. We kind of saw that with the Ashland study, yeah. and um, that pro we're trying to see if that'll have a higher number. And if not, um, there's reason for redundancy to not just always exist in one building. We we kind of felt it with Town Hall a little bit, and you're gonna and especially with public safety. There's, uh, there's some other reasons other than just response time that we want to look at another location. Uh, some of what we do on Marathon Day and being so centralized downtown, we've talked about for years. and um, yep. we're, So all of that is being assessed right now. I don't want to get ahead of the conclusion, but those are the items that we'll study. We'll put out an initial report for you, and then they should really be drilled into like you're doing with Center School right now. You know, Just really see what's, what the uh, values are. So you... Um when did you become permanent firefighter in town? Uh, 1989. 1989. You were on the call department prior to that? Yep. Um, you got a bachelor's degree, you got a master's degree. Um, so it's, um, it's hard for me to, to put into words how happy I am with the uh, path that the fire department has taken. Uh, not just through my tenure as selectman, but prior to that with Chief Clark and Doherty and McMillan and obviously Chief Stewart. Um, the, the people that, like, not to pile on, but the people that you're bringing in, I see a ton of people that are coming in. And we, you know, we, we watch the pinnings, we watch the promotions, we watch um, people coming in. What I don't see is a lot of people leaving. And I like seeing the longevity for, I mean, I know we have people that are maxed out and they're just, they're staying because they, they like working for the town. Uh, we got a ton of new people and they're kind of feeding off of that. So I think you're doing a great job running the department. Um, I just, I wish we just did a second national search to, uh, to find a, 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 someone maybe a little bit more competent. Uh, which is totally tongue-in-cheek, if you, if you know. <laughs> the fact that you did a first one is the reason that I'm sitting here. Um, so I, uh, I, like the, the, I like the direction the department's going. I think that you, you're, you're doing a wonderful job um, of promoting from within. I think you're doing a great job with, uh, with the hires. And uh, this, uh, this task of... Uh, a second fire station versus expanding versus staying as you are is a, is a daunting one, I'm sure. So uh, I trust you 100% in, uh, in continuing on that process. Thank you. Mr. Hurt, questions, comments? So uh, just a couple of general thoughts. I, 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 on the goals from last year, coming into this year, wrapping them up and keeping some of them going, obviously that's fine. I think it's all going in the right direction. Uh, to Mr. Ted Stone's point, I think the department uh, is doing well, doing very well, and we are absolutely on the right path. It's a journey. It's never over. It's just continuous improvement. It means continuous, right? So we're always working to improve, and I think that uh, everybody gets that, and I think uh, you're leading the charge very well. Personally for you, I see you as far more assertive, far more confident, and far more um, in charge in running the show than when you first stepped in. It is never easy in any organization, public or private, to be, quote, one of the people in the organization and then become the boss. Or even if you're stepping up in the ranks, ultimately when you come, become the boss and you were one of the guys or the gals or whatever in the organization, that's not easy to do. And uh, we talked about this, I think it's your hiring. Um, but I think uh, that's over now. I don't see any signs of that anymore. That's a good thing, in my opinion. And uh, I think you're running the show like you should, and you should keep at it. Thanks. Mr. Nazarell, I know you're new to this, but yeah, would you so like to weigh say, in a little bit? <laughs> as the newbie. <laughs> no excuses next year. I have very little uh, I can really add to the whole process here. Um, I think that uh, my fellow board members have, have really said a lot of what, you know, what I've been thinking. And so I'm just going to come from my heart and say, you know, my time at the planning board, my time here, and when I finally had a chance to kind of observe what you're doing, I can't say anything but, oh my God, wow, I'm, I'm really impressed. Um, you've just thought, thought a lot of the things through that I never would have thought of, and, um, and I find that it's, it's incredibly impressive. Um, as far as where you are taking the town, 
and some of the things that you brought up also I think are I think you have very good foresight and I think it's all a very good thing so um, I don't, you know, don't want to go on and on here but uh, basically as the newbie guy but um, you know I think that you're leading it in the right direction and uh, I'm very pleased with uh, with having you on board thank you very much so we have two things we need to accomplish tonight. One, which we have just done now, which is a review of the past year's performance and the goals. And the second will be the goal setting for the coming year. Um, the employee performance review should be covering the performance of the past year. So um, we will be at this point ranking, doing, doing the, um, before we do that, um, Maria, uh, perhaps this is acceptable. I know on the review forms we have here, w which are confidential, um, there, there are you know, comments on strengths, on development opportunities. Um, I, I think perhaps those are best for you to share directly with the employee. I don't know that that needs to be read out, but there, in each case there is an overall summary of performance, which is kind of a summary paragraph. Would it be all right if I read that aloud? Sure. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to read the summary um, on each of these, um, and they are very, very nice, so nothing to worry about. Um, Chief Slayman brings a high level of competence and professionalism to Hoppington Fire. In addition, he has consistently strived to motivate and elevate his staff to increasing levels of achievement as well. In addition to the critical day-to-day -day operations of the Hoppington Fire Department, he has accomplished a great deal in community outreach facility and equipment management and strategic planning. He's a model of leadership and hard work. So congratulations, Steve. Um, before we move on to goals, uh, the employee review, we have uh, several categories here. Um, clearly outstanding, above satisfactory, satisfactory needs improvement, and unsatisfactory, which certainly would not apply here. So, um, so this is a this is what we vote. Is that correct? My, yes. Now, my recollection yeah. last year is each board member went around and gave their ranking. Well, we have to vote a final determination. Mm -hmm. That's what goes in the file. Everybody did their individual ranking, and then it was you know majority. If it wasn't unanimous, then it was majority. Okay. Okay. So. Um, shall we just go around the table? Mr. Herr. Clearly outstanding. Okay. Above satisfactory. Mr. Nazarillo. I'll go clearly, clearly outstanding. I'll go with uh, clearly outstanding. And I go with above satisfactory, but I do believe that clearly outstanding has won the day. Okay. And it looks like for goals next year, there's a, <laughs> this is really easy because there's a lot of unanimity. Um, Maria very nicely compiled a, um, a summation of the goals that were put forth by the board members. And uh, there are two principal goals that everybody seems to have. Well, Brendan might want to weigh in on something. The two uh, standouts were to finalize the community preparedness with town manager and police chief which we knew we were going to keep going on, and the second fire station, finish the study and finalize. Um, Mr. Tedstone or Mr. Nazarill, do you have anything you want to add that may, maybe we would discuss? Otherwise, there is a unanimity among um, three board members on that. I have nothing to add. I, I actually, you know, if, if you noticed, uh, um, with the um, finalizing the community preparedness, I, what, what what I added to it was to um, try and get some tangible results so we might be able to bring to town meeting for, for funding that you might need for other things to take it to that next level. You know, are there pieces of equipment or, or, or stuff that, that's needed to, uh, to make this work? We were talking about the um, emergency communications center because you know, without, as you said, without a second uh, uh, building or, 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 or another place to set up, we do have the Police station across, but God forbid something happens during a race or something, you have to get to it. 
Okay, the bow bolt control. Yep. So, so just to just to give it the rather than just uh, have it, it okay. to, to complete it to give it some kind of a strategic goal. Okay, so you you'd like to see some some measurable tangibles in that community preparedness plan. Um, maybe just for a point of discussion, um, the, the plan template is really well designed by FEMA. Now you do customize it to like your local goals. Mm -hmm. um, there's a part of me that as I'm listening is, you know, again, our day-to-day -day work with Mr. Kamalo and Chief Lee and myself are kind of like prioritizing based on everything that comes across even in that plan and that we face, we, we just realize we have to grab these goals and it might be, for example, um, part of the fire station is what we face downtown for Marathon Day and whether we have a backup EOC and how we run. Uh, the work we do at the LNG plant, kind of um, making sure that it's connection to the community and its safety planning is all um, done. Those are the things we kind of look at. So I, I you know, maybe I'm just thinking aloud is the, I really feel like the plan is there. Maybe you would like us to just bring forward the action items of uh, FY20 that really come to the top for our group. Cause that's, that's the, you know, we weekly talk about those types of things what we're facing. Um, as something comes in, um, it's and and it's not just all reactionary because the existing model keeps us focused. I mean, um, we're you know our discussion on this backup EOC is is ahead of the game. So I, I hope you feel that. So, anyways, I'm that's talking aloud. Well, I think they run. If I may, through the chair, I think they run hand in hand. You know, I do. So, you know, yep. The second one, like looking for the looking for a site for a second fire station. You know, it, it's. There is a there is yes. a goal. Is, is it going to be here, there, or to to um, Ted Stone's point, expanding what we've got on Main Street? Yep. You know, and this is the same thing. You know, are there? You know, is there a, is there an, an EOC needed? Or is there something else yep. needed that that will make this make this whole thing complete? Right. Thanks. So it's a shorter, it's a more compact goal. In my yep. Other board members have feelings on, on some sort of an addition to address Mr. Mr. Cotino's comments about tangible, tangibles. So the only goal that, that I had submitted that I don't see here is <clears throat> um, continue the, to prepare existing staff to be ready to step in for a promotion when one comes up. Uh, make that lieutenant list or deputy chief list or whatever, whatever position may be coming up, make it continue to make it very competitive. So you're getting the cream of the, you're getting the cream of the cream of the crop. And uh, I have no, no reservations that you are gonna do that. Um, but that was one of the things that I had said. And that is a major bullet of this year's goal of employee development was that dialogue. Yeah, well, like I told you, when, when we put that, that kid on from WPI, <coughs> or oh, that gentleman on from WPI, yeah. um, you know, when I got on, we had to tie a knot behind our back. This guy's a chemical engineer, and yeah. uh, it's, yep. the, the fire service has just come leaps and bounds from, the, from the putting the wet stuff on the hot stuff. And uh, you've evolved well, and I expect you to continue to evolve equally. Some healthy competition in there that yep. helps drive it on its own too. Yep. Well, I had had as a third goal continue employing development program, and I mean you've just been doing such a great job, and there seems to be this culture that's been created that we we kind of dropped off. But maybe that maybe that should be um, just stated. Um, continue employee development uh, with focused on uh, what staff promotion, staff advancement. Um. We saw that today, you know, with oh. Deb hand and that. You know, and that's what I feel as though. Yeah. Something that, that uh, we didn't see in the, in the, in the previous administration, um, where you weren't sitting up here more previously, and, it, and it's great to see that you have confidence and trust in, in, in your people to say you got this, you got the ball, you handle it, and uh, you're watching it from above, which is 
exactly what this person is looking for. You're, you're making the department in your image, which is great. My comment on the, on the tangibles, I, I, it's always great to have tangibles and I like to encourage that, but I don't want that to be the yardstick for the, com the success or, or not success of the community preparedness. Maybe as things will unfold in the year and what you work on with the town manager and with police, there won't be as readily identifiable tangibles as there is just program progress so okay. I don't know is there a way that we could include that as, as say not that it's a, an either or or our decision point but um, maybe um, encourage uh, or, or I'd encourage finding tangible results or, or something that that isn't well, the reason why I was saying that was you know, that's not what it's all based on. You know, what he was just saying was that, that most of the plans are, are, are there and they're, they're in, they're in the can. Mm -hmm. so, what I was, so what I'm just trying to do is to take it to that next level. If the plans are in the can, what can we do to, to, make, to make them actually um, work? And that's what we're talking about, the, uh, at reach, at the, emergency, or the EOC, the Emergency Operations Center, mm -hmm. or something else. So that's why I, I was, I, I was tongue-in-cheek saying drone before. Yeah, no. But you know, it's something, it, it, you know, does that help in the emergency situation? You know, some of these other things that, that maybe we can take the town meeting, and, you know, that if, if it is back up, that, that if it helps the department. You know, we were talking about tactical equipment for, the, for, for firefighters. You know, that was last year one of the things we were talking about. So there could be some of these other things that, um, um, that uh, make the plan uh, more easily uh, able to implement. Well, maybe you just soften it by something like seek tangible, uh, achieve tangible results as appropriate or as, as, as deemed appropriate or something. So it's, you know, if, if something comes up to town meeting, that's, that's great. But if for some chance he doesn't identify a spending opportunity because there isn't something that's, you know, really obvious, I don't want that to be a detriment to look like it's a goal you didn't, a performance standard you didn't meet, you want to do this if it's the right thing to do, not because somebody told you you have to do this to meet your performance evaluation. I feel like you've given me room to add accomplishments or uh, accomplished action items underneath that model if we work together. So I, I think it's easy. As a pre yep, just just yep, giving some room, yeah, yeah. just giving some room, and maybe yep. Maria, you can <coughs> wordsmith it to meld those two thoughts together. I'm not looking for the police chief to ask for a tactical helicopter or something. Like oh, that. I thought you were. <laughs> That's next year. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, in that case, are we, are we, Mr. Hur, are you happy with what we got here? I'm good. Okay. So we are going to um, include the community preparedness plan with some kind of a statement about um, seeking opportunities for, for, you know, funding tangibles as, as deemed appropriate. Um, we will include the uh, second fire station finished study and um, continue employee development with focus, would you say focus or, uh, on, on uh, preparedness to, staff, to staff for promotion. Staff, staff preparedness for yep. advancement. Okay. Do we need to vote on this or? All right. Yes. Shall we, shall we, um, it, I'll, I'll ask for board approval for those, those three goals for the fire chief for the coming year. Um, is there a motion for that? So I'll moved. Support that, Mr. Second. Hearn? Second, moved and second, and all those in favor, please say aye. 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 It's opposed, it's unanimous. Okay. We're good. Thanks. Thank Thanks, you. Chief. Could I do um, one personal privilege here? Um, just, I want to give a, a luck. Uh, shout out to my, uh, my staff, the deputy chief ran that uh, incident on Spring Street. It took me a while to get there, and um, they they really had an A game during our challenging call. Um, the group that was on duty was amazing. The people that came back, the outside assistance we had from our neighbors um, for an extended period of time, it was amazing. So uh, just it made me proud, kind of coming in late and seeing what they accomplished. So it kind of ties to this a little bit that. There's some real 
he really had an A game, and the people on duty had an A game, and our neighbors had an A game. So, thanks. And Chief, we're giving the shout out to you because you did a wonderful job handling a very difficult situation, protecting the community, and uh, every time something is a first, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I think that in years past we have voted the final um, assessment only because in their personnel file this information yep. will go and unfortunately the chief were to move on and go to some big city someday they'd want to see records of what he's received and so on so okay. I think it would make sense to vote it. Just it to never hurts Mr. The rating, this, the clarity I, I believe we had three. We had three to two. Mr. Hurd would you like to make a motion? I move that the Board of Selectmen uh, well okay wait a minute now let's think about that because I don't want people voting no. Why not? Oh, I, I, I mean, Why not? it was kind of a, a, a majority, majority has been determined, and didn't we kind of agree? So that basically, why don't you say, if, if I may put words in your mouth, that we put in the record Wait first. <laughs> <laughs> that we put in the that we put in the record the motion that the, the the motion that was taken for the uh, for the. Uh, uh, well, performance performance value. Value. There were three clearly <laughs> outstanding and two above satisfactories. All great, quote, grades, right? Right. So. Um, but I just wouldn't want to create a situation where it was a three to two vote because that has a negative connotation. I'm, I'm trying to do this just to memorialize a positive. Right. Reason. So that's what you want to do, just memorialize it. You just want to make a motion to memorialize it. I don't think anybody will say no. I, I'm, I'm not necessarily feeling that those who had a different opinion would vote no. If there's been a majority opinion feeling one way, I would think the board would support that. Got it. I move that the Board of Select memorialize tonight's discussion regarding the fire chief's performance at Clearly Outstanding. Second. Motion has been made and seconded that the uh, performance evaluation be for Clearly Outstanding. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. Okay, Chief Lee, good evening. You've had a bit of a busy couple of weeks too, so. Yes, it is. <laughs> it doesn't affect our numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, welcome board. Uh, so, for the Chief, I'm gonna share, as we did with the Chief Slayman, um, I'll go over first the goals that were set for uh, FY18. Uh, both he and the fire chief had joint goal with the town manager and the fire chief of community preparedness. Um, goal number two was school resource officer all inclusive. Work with youth services and school to develop parent info on teen stress mental health, suicide prevention, continue youth alcohol and substance abuse awareness program. And goal three was the feasibility of a canine unit, including feasibility, process, and grants availability. So, would you like to tell us a little about how those goals have progressed? I think you've got some good news. Yeah, I'll start off with the uh you know, something very exciting to the town. Hopefully, uh, within a few more weeks at a meeting, we'll bring our newest uh, officer, Titan, in to be uh, sworn in as our new canine. Um, a lot of work went, went into it. We did it in a short period of time, and we were able to obtain a grant from the Stanton Foundation for $25,000, and we were able to uh, secure a dog, select the proper person for uh, the job, who is Officer Brian Sanchione. Um He is in now his eighth week of uh, training for his 12 week school and he'll be able to successfully track and have that extra uh, dog and that asset on the, on the streets in a short period of time. Uh, we're also looking to send him, uh, basically you have an opportunity to either go to the narcotic school or the, uh, the bomb detection and we've decided with the marathon and our security needs we're going to take the route of the, uh, the bomb detection also, if you get involved in that, there's a, there's a lot of grant money through the uh, federal government if you have a, a bomb detection dog. And I've seen other departments get tricked out Tahoes and all the equipment <laughs> you need to, to support in those endeavors. So we're excited that the, 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 the dog was uh, uh, purchased 
and we have we have a more than dedicated officer that is handling that. You're not going to pin him, are you? What's that? that? You're not going to pin him, are you? No, that no, could no. be dangerous. He will. He Doc does have a vest, so. Is he going to get one of those cool vests that they wear? Oh yeah. <laughs> probably, probably. <laughs> Put a pin on there. <laughs> oh, the vest, not on the door. <laughs> Rankings. And for some reason, I picked the name. We all had a chance to pick the names. For some reason, they chose mine. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other aspect, uh, the, other, the, the other goal was to increase the awareness of SROs uh, in the school. Uh, uh, same type of situation. And this has really been done quite a bit from around the department because now we have you know, an officer getting involved in canine. We have two officers now that are involved in the SRO program, along with Officer Phil Powers. Uh, they've been a great asset to the school. We have nothing but positive feedback. We did you know, studies to determine, uh, I won't bore you with all the details, what was needed in the schools, and we definitely needed it in the secondary schools besides the high school. And as the future goes on, we're actually probably looking, as the department grows and expands, of putting in a uh, two full-time SROs and keep it one as a part-time as, as our needs uh, come available. And we certainly have a lot of support from the school department. We're really doing our best to train them up. A lot of the, uh, you know, the issues that we have in schools is uh, you know, problems with alcohol and drugs and uh, Phil does an outstanding job with the, par uh, the party policies. Uh, we do canine searches. Uh, on uh, certain um, times of the year, um, but we also continue to work with the youth coordinator, the, the Middlesex County. My offices have had a tremendous amount of training when it comes to mental health awareness. And the majority of things you see in school, and obviously we've had some tragic incidents in, in the school, everything, alcohol, drugs, it all derives from mental health issues and stress. The people are self-medicating and you know that, that type of stuff progresses but ever since we've got that uh that joint task force the jail the, the diversion, diversion program we received a, a a ton of training in that area for offices to be a little bit better or not no not doing what they did in the old days is just lock someone up mm -hmm. for for something but to actually work with uh these kids and get them the help that they need and it's not just kids it's it's everybody in town and the biggest thing is not just noticing in school, but having all our officers trained. If there's red flags out there, well, when you respond to a call at home or, or things of that nature to detect, they're much better at detecting these mental health issues that, that crop up. And we've certainly made some big strides in that area. We work, uh, we now have three advocates at our disposal. And, uh, you know, we've, we've kind of become the model for this area, and now South Borough and West Borough, they're gonna start expanding on the jail diversion program as well. Um, and the final goal was uh, with the town manager and the fire chief, uh, the joint preparedness, and uh, I, I, you know, these gentlemen rode my coattails for this whole thing, but. <laughs> He's a hard worker. He's no gentleman. <laughs> <what's going> <laughs> He's no gentleman. gentleman. <laughs> but we certainly, I, I could go expand upon what, what uh, the fire chief said, but he did an, uh, a great job explaining. But just some of the things that we did as part of it, just that directly affect the police department, is we increased the uh, <clears throat> incident command training throughout the department. We've, we've raised all the level of all our offices at incident command. Um, uh, we've provided a very important and an achievement chief would agree with this it's called like mayday training for fire all our dispatches you all are aware that they'll work at the uh, <coughs> police department now for police and fire so their their training has been enhanced we've enhanced our training room in support of emergency preparedness technology enhancements upgrade installed installed in the training room permanent work, workstation created Two additional phones have been purchased, uh, configured and installed, additional computers, and the network has been uh, mapped out to facilitate a more efficient use, as well as upgrade our police radio system. And like Steve said, it's getting our people ready and then moving into the next phase of spreading that information out to the community. We do the best we can with, with National Night Out, or, autism awareness programs, things that we have at the station, but 
we're looking forward to continue to work together and come up with a great plan to get that information out to the community. Great. Well, I got the elbow over here from Mr. Cotino and the last one who claimed that I took all the good questions by going first. So, um, Mr. Cotino, would you like to go first? Sure. <laughs> and I, I, uh, Chief, I would give the, when we start just talking about the canine last year, you know, the, the rollout of that has just been uh, fabulous. It's uh, totally smooth. The, the dog's great. You can find just the right guy to, uh, to uh, fund the program. You know, and then you know, finding the grant money, and then again, finding more grant money for, for the bond protection. I think that's, that's just fabulous. The jail aversion program, you know, you're hitting, hitting uh, all of the, uh, the issues that, uh, uh, that, that really came up last year. <coughs> um, and, 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 and then the last one, the school resource officer. You know, uh, you know having Phil in there that, that has such a great rapport with, with so many students. Um, you know, and having have him, you know, it's just at that age that he could he could leave us at any time. You know, to have him uh, train the, 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 the new recruits to, so that they can they can uh, you know, take over having that before because everything with an SRO is before, and and, and that's how they and they you know, keep them out of the, the jail aversion program as, as as long as you know his his he's listening and, and the kids feel comfortable talking. You know, and that gets, uh, also gets into the uh, intervention and, and uh, we're talking about the mental illness, but, but also just the, you know, we, we lean on it as mental illness, but a lot of times it's just stress and anxiety. Yeah. So some of the kids can feel comfortable enough to, to talk about a stressful situation or some, some anxieties that they have, you know, they can avoid all of these things. So, you know, so we just keep cutting off, cutting these things off with the past by a great SRO. And to have two more being trained by a really wonderful SRO is, uh, Thank you. Someone else like to. So again, as as the newbie, I don't want to uh, I don't want to go too too long here. Um, but I think there's a couple things I do want to touch on. Um, one is the SROs, and um, you know, I, can, I recall my, my daughter always telling me, "Oh, OP says this, OP says that," and at first we're like, "Who is this OP?" What's he doing with my daughter? <laughs> he's, got a white, he's got a white van with no windows. <laughs> but what's amazing, what I gathered from it, is how he has gained such a rapport with the kids that they go to him for yeah. anything, any problems that's coming up. And, um, and I think that's the relationship that we want between the mm. kids and the police officers, especially the schools, uh, where so many issues need. Um, so yeah, I've been I've been incredibly impressed with the, the whole program. Um, I think, of course, the canine thing. Uh, I, I was shocked to hear that dogs go through the school <laughs> and sniff lockers and all that. And again, you know, prevention is and that's prevention yeah. is, is, is what we're looking for. So, um, so I love it. <laughs> I think it's doing a great job. Thanks, sir. Let me go. Okay, so uh, Chief, I had the um, the uh, ability to sit down and have a discussion with Officer, Officer Sancioni last week. I met with him for about 45 minutes and, and got to sit and talk and, and really kind of get to know him. Um, and I will, I'll agree with your with with your um, vote of confidence that I, I think you definitely picked the right guy. Um, he went right through you know, just discussed with all the stuff, and I'm sure that he dumbed it down tremendously for me. I found it to be very interesting. Um, the rationale why you went, why, why we're gonna go with the bomb sniffing dog versus the drug dog and, and the training that he does. You know, he does his eight hours here and then he goes over and, and he's doing this sniff test out, uh, you know, this search and rescue out in here. And he's very, very dedicated to it and it's, uh, it's refreshing to see. Um, and so the SRO, so that, I mean, it's a definitely a feather in your cap for, for, uh, for who you chose there and, and how that program's coming along. The SRO, um, I've not known Officer Powers quite as long as Chief Slammon, but not too far from it. Um, I had a chance to sit up there when we were voting the other day, and I, I, I sat and had a discussion with him for about 15 or 20 minutes, maybe a little longer. 
And it was amazing that the kids that have left the school that are coming back to say hi, he knows them by name, he, you know, if there was an issue that they had, how's this issue going along? His, his involvement with the community doesn't stop when they leave the high school. And, and it's very refreshing to see that, that you have people in your, in your department that are so dedicated. Uh, Officer Sancioni with, with, with the, the canine and then that other, the pink patch initiative that he did. Um, and, 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 the, uh, and Officer Phil with the kids. Um, you know, I, I know my kids are, are kind of an anomaly where they're, ra well, they're an anomaly to begin with, but um, <laughs> they were, they're raised around the police and the fire and the DPW and, and, yeah. and around the, the, the fabric of Hopkinton. And they feel very, very comfortable um, with any of your officers and, and any of the firefighters. Um, but it's amazing at the lacrosse games or soccer games, and, and they're all talking about, oh, I saw Officer Phil here. Or, um, and I'm gonna touch on, just for a second, Officer Stickney. I've known Officer Stickney for uh, quite a while. I've known him, I knew it at, him at his last apartment. I knew him when he was uh, a guy who played softball with Baby, yeah, you know what? Um, and I had a chance to discuss, you know, to, I ran into him and, and, uh, and talked with him on Saturday evening. And, you know, I go up and shake his hand. How you doing, Ben? Good, sir. You know, he's very polite, very professional. Um, so I, I, I like the guys that you're having, guys and girls that you're having on your, on your department. Um, one of the things I brought up last year was when we were growing up in this community, which has changed immensely, immensely. We had, uh, we had Officer Adams, we had Hank Fredette, we had Harry Carver, we had all the old timers that you just didn't want to disappoint. And you couldn't do anything without, uh, I mean, first of all, we grew up with their kids, so they knew where the parties were. Half of them were at Hank Fredette's house. Um, so we couldn't get away from them, but we didn't want to disappoint them. And I see how this is uh, the evolution of the department, where if the kids are comfortable discussing real controversial or difficult issues with the police officers, if I see that as, as a true feather in your cap for, your, for the guys on your department and girls. So, um, so that's, where I, that's where I stand on that. And, and um, we know about the, uh, the community preparedness that, uh, that those guys rode your coattails uh, to where they are today. So, uh, so for those issues, um, that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. And I, I really can't say enough about uh, all the men and women on the police department, but uh, getting uh, Officer Stickney has just been a godsend. Yeah. I mean, he comes in with 10 years' experience, and he knows more about computers and radios. Yeah. And so we got him plugged into a lot of areas. So. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's just a great guy. And yeah, hopefully we can continue to recruit like that. The hierarchy in his last department weren't uh, huggy, feely, is uh, they weren't they weren't the nicest group, so I can say that with all confidence, because I'm still the older brother. <laughs> Mr. Herr. Thank you, Mr. Testa. I think on these three goals, Chief, you're trending or have achieved them uh, uh, clearly. For example, the canine officer and the dog, great job. I didn't think it was going to happen as fast as it happened, so kudos to you. Uh, I've seen them out about a little bit, so. Great. Uh, specific to the school resource officer, the two additional part time OP training and everything. I love this thing on the car. I think that's been the last year, too. That's probably the biggest yeah. aim for the, for the kids and anybody to see that. That was pretty cool to see that. And beside the cruiser, it says OP. He, 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 he took some ribbing from other officers, but he likes it. <laughs> the kids like it. The kids love it. Yeah. I've had some conversations with OP about things and kids and all, and they can talk over it. So well done on the two goals, and obviously ongoing with the fire chief and Mr. Kamala on the community preparedness work. So I think in those three goals for the fiscal year, uh, job well done. Thank you. It is my turn. Uh, Does like a, a shooter, you 
more than likely we'll join the, uh, it's called a SEMLEC team, where you can share resources and you can share, share dogs as well, get them in, in, into a program like that. Otherwise, when you join that SEMLEC team, you, you, all, you automatically have a mutual agreement, a mutual aid agreements like we do now, where we had SWAT come out for that call the other day. That's all part of a uh, SEMLEC regional team, and I have uh, an officer assigned to that team as well, Detective Bill Rashad. So we would call in our officer first if it happened in our town, if it, another town was requesting like a tracking or something along those lines, but no pursuits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And it takes time to develop that kind of trust and that kind of relationship. And you can say, I oh, you want a policeman as your friend, but you know, you really have to earn it. And so I, I think that's just that's tremendously uh, impressive. And, and so you know, on, on all these um, you know individual goals, we've identified a certain thing. You know, those goals have been um, more than well met. Uh, one thing I just do want to mention: um, we'll, we'll be talking about goals for FY19 in the next part of this. Um, there is a bit of a thread that has run through uh, things to work for for next year that pertain to personnel. Um, and you know, the fire chief has really put a focus on personal development, on personnel management, on <coughs> morale in the course. And um, you know, I think there may be some growth opportunities where there have been indications that there are some areas that could be improved in the force. Um, you brought on some new hires. Um, I think things are really heading in a great direction for mm -hmm. this department. Um, but clearly, you know, the integration of the old and the morale and the motivation um, is always an indicator of a strong, of a strong department. So I think that's something that um, you know, we want to talk about later and look um, you know, a focus on um, um. Yeah, one of, one of our key focuses uh, this year has been uh, mentoring and uh, training. I think the specifics on that are not related to the, uh, the, to the goals, but we also uh, made a purchase of some new uh, software that really modernizing our training and we're able to track everybody's office, officer's training and uh, whether it's leadership training, fire, uh, uh, dispatch training, patrol, we, we've really been excelling on that, and we've certainly taken uh, quite a bit of opportunity because of our training room, as we have now. But we've got we've we've received a lot of free training from some really great organizations. One of the best, I, uh, myself and my three lieutenants, just went to a uh, alternative leadership school, which was you know real eye opener, especially dealing with uh, millennials now, and the new one is the Generation uh, Z, I believe. So. There's a lot of stuff to learn out there. You can always improve on, on leadership. It's a constant learning process. Well, I think it's fun to set up with individual goals, which, you know, we need to realize that sometimes there's some other aspects as well that, you know, are, are, are just doesn't. I have one question I just want to ask you about your, your um, you know, back to SRO and the outreach programs. Maybe you mentioned it and I missed it. Um, are, there, are there parts of your program that directly address or train or alert parents for whether it's assignment to look for, things that may create these things. Um, you know, I think we've got we've got a community of higher achievers and higher achieving parents and it's been shown that sometimes this training team stress and crew put them all the way up to suicide. Turns out the kids were feeling all kinds of pressure from their parents that they had to, you know, get into an Ivy League school, they had to do this, that and the other. They have no idea yeah. what they're doing to their kids. Maybe it doesn't matter that they don't get into Harvard. Maybe they're going to just yeah. with, you know, UMass or whatever. Um, but the parents play a role. Are there parent? Is there parent aspect for some of this? Absolutely. Like especially if we, if we were dealing with something with our advocates uh, for the uh, jail diversion program, officers picked up on signs. They would re refer. You know, whether uh, to some type of mental health uh, agency, 
and not only are you dealing with the with the child or the person in distress you're also educating uh, the parents uh, I can't say enough about uh, Denise the work she does and she she she'll, she's constantly meeting with parents when they you know there are crisis signs uh, of, of of certain individuals in school and of course the SROs do a great job on that and looking for certain things and, and like you have said earlier a lot of people are coming to uh, the, the SROs with information, not only in that area, but you know, prevention things, parties, things of that nature. Yeah, I'm thinking prevention because those are all things that are dealing with it once it's reached a crisis level and you pick up that there's a problem. But being proactive on the other end to educate or alert parents before there's a problem, mm -hmm. to recognize what things can contribute to this or recognize your own warning signs or somehow just be more alert to what's going on in your homes and maybe they can nip it in the butt before it reaches the level where you folks get involved. Um, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing that we're always... Front end. That's more of like a, an assembly thing what we've done when we yeah. wanted to prepare parents for recent events when we were having active shooters and things of like that nature what to look for and we're always trying to get that message out to parents that you know to pry into what's going on in your your child's life be vigilant look for certain uh, uh signs look at their social media look at you know be a spy <laughs> because in the long run it's it's for the better and sometimes that's tough with parents because a lot of people nowadays just wants to be you know, their friends yep. not their parents so that's something that's really big in the future well, um, I think as we did before, for uh, this to be the part of the ranking part, I would just read the overall summary, um, which is a, a, a consolidation of, of comments. And the overall summary performance says, Chief Lee has successfully strengthened the department with a number of well-selected new members and has maintained stability. It is initiated an exciting new program, the K-9, while being mindful of budgetary issues, it's exhibiting resourcefulness in finding methods that are economical for the town. He has developed, he has developed, redesigned, and strengthened department programs to meet the challenging needs of the community. The chief presents a positive and professional image for Hopkinton, the Hopkinton Police Department and the town. Now, um, Doing the performance rankings, I, I saw a hand in the back the previous time with Mr. Sistari, who served on this board for many years, and I'm a little unsure of what the right way to do this um, is, and I'm going to feedback maybe it was a better way to approach this. Um, Mr. Sistari, did you want to weigh in on what your recollections were for how we went about this? Because I want to make sure that the rating is done in, in the right form. Yeah, I think at that time my comment was more around uh, just the different components that I know we always had to vote on before. Um, and you know, typically what we've done was we came up with that draft assessment and we were asking the previous town manager uh, if they had any comments on the assessment that was written up for them. In other words, you know, defending any weaknesses or this or that or Adding any, adding any additional components that they felt they achieved that were above and beyond. Um, but then the assessment was voted on because that assessment has to go in as part of the public record. Correct. Um, and then after that, uh, we kind of came to a conclusion of the rating. Uh, you know, and I think that the way the way you're doing it, I remember, uh, as I recall anyway, we did it that way when I was chair. Um, it did start. You know, running into a little difficulty if you had uh, too many people, you know, on one side or another, and it wasn't a clear majority uh, of anything. Um, but it, it seems like that's going fine. Um, and then just uh, having a final vote on the goals and objectives at the end too. So the three components to vote on were the goals and objectives, the assessment, and the rating. Can I just add a point kind of in general specific to the chief and Please. a little bit to Mr. Sestari's comment? Um, you know, 
public reviews, we work in the public arena, are not the norm. Yep. Usually this is done in companies behind closed doors and it's all very professional, but it's somewhat private. Um, here it's right out in the open, right? And I think, um, especially when you're talking about public safety officials, and in particular the police department, it's even a little bit more difficult because there's some uh, public safety concerns that go with what, um, what can be deliberated or discussed. Uh, and we have to be careful not to cross those bounds. I think specific to the chief in the past year, in the police department, there's been a fair bit of stress in the department uh, with a couple of officers having to take some time as a result of stress related issues. And I think that's put additional stress on others um, in the department and probably stressed then the leadership team in the department to some extent. So I think my sense is, and I could be wrong, but my sense is there is a, a heightened level of stress within the organization um, that has to also be addressed. And at the end of the day, whether it's directly related to you and some of the people you interact with more normally or as rank and file members, it's still your opportunity for improvement, right? It's, I was gonna say it's your problem. Well, let's not make it your problem. Let's make it your opportunity to improve the department. Um, that, that stuff exists in the department. Uh, I think there's, there's reasons why, which um, kind of come with the territory. It's a tough, difficult, it's a, it's a stressful job. And uh, I'd encourage the chief to stay the course, stay after that, and if, if nothing else, get into some of that stuff a little bit more in detail because it is impacting, I think, some of the public safety deployment processes that we then go through um, in terms of officers on the street and things like that. So uh, there's a lot there and some of that's a little bit veiled, but um, I do think we need to have a stronger, day-to-day -day presence inside the entire organization leadership-wise to help understand and, and recognize and guide through those stressful situations between the, the, the team and the incidents that cause some of this stress and then the team perhaps afterwards amongst themselves as they're trying to figure out how to process some of the things they see and have to deal with. Um, and just sort of typical normal, you know, bunch of people on a team, there's going to be a bunch of different opinions about things, but somebody's got to sort through all that and keep everybody going in the same direction. And I think there's some challenge there that, that, that you can get done, but I think you just got to get into it a little bit further. Without getting into any details, uh, you know, the situation is an anomaly, and I speak to several chiefs throughout the state on, uh, you know, several professionals and no, no one's ever <laughs> heard of such a situation with you where you're dealing with the loss of uh, a few people uh, at the same time for a 26 man department but I can't say enough about the people that are working now that have stepped up and, and we've still been able to do everything that was set for goals most people would put things on the back burner and say let's get this straightened out for us and, and but we decided to, to take the high road and, and, and move on and not let this affect the morale of the other people in the organization. Um, as far as leadership, um, it, it, it's certainly tough times uh, for certain supervisors uh, dealing with the, uh, some of this stressful information. But uh, you know, we continue to train them and, and, and get them the, the focus on their uh, on their on their people and uh, you know. Some people have different different leadership styles. You'll see that in any organization, and some people don't like some people's leadership styles. But not, I can say for a fact that I don't have one leader on the department that has a deficiency or or is not doing things up to par because I would I would certainly hold that uh, person accountable. Uh, like I say, different strokes for different folks different styles, some are more autocratic, some are more democratic, some are more laissez-faire, but the biggest thing is to get them all on the same page. Mm -hmm. and, and ultimately that, what you just described there, coming out of some of that stressful stuff that happens uh, on the job as the normal course of being a police officer, mm -hmm. all that eventually flows up to you. Absolutely. And then you're the person that has to step in 
And you're the person that says, okay, this is what we're gonna do. We all gonna go in a room and figure it out. We're gonna go in a room and figure it out till we figure it out, right? So, but that comes to you as the chief. Chief, can I ask uh, to the chair? Yes, yes, Just please. one more question and, and I truly don't know the answer. I try to only ask questions I already know the answers to. Um, <laughs> the shifts that are being filled, are, are these guys, are, is your department volunteering for them or are they being, are they being inversed? <clears throat> Uh, there, are, there are occasions when there's a certain, uh, there, are, there are, have been forces with the uh, vacation time and around the holidays, but for the most part, we're, we're filling the shifts with the... So they're jumping in to help? Yeah, they're all stepping up and helping other people out. Mm -hmm. I neglected last time around to ask Mr. Kamalo for his input, questions, comments. Um, would you like to add anything, Mr. Kamalo? <laughs> Why not? I, again, I, I think as I've said in priors, it's been a great honor and pleasure to work alongside uh, Chief Lee and Chief Slayman. I professionally have learned a great deal from them, uh, working on the community preparedness project collaboratively, I think is really fascinating. Uh, it's exciting, uh, it's challenging. Uh, and, and I think our goal is to keep this project moving forward. Overall, I, it's been a great pleasure working with uh, Chief Lee and Chief Stammer. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Um, the overall performance rating now, we asked Mr. Sestari for his comments. My recollection from what I clearly remember at least last year, that we did each make our recommend. It wasn't a vote, it was a recommendation. And then we put those all together into a vote. So, are we all comfortable that that's all right? Because I can't see just coming out with a recommendation without other people having a chance to, to weigh in. Mr. Herr, you've been here the longest. Do you recall that's how we've usually done it? We just got to a few minutes ago with the fire chief was fine. No. Yeah. All right, fine. and then we'll make a motion and a vote mm -hmm. yeah. on, on what the majority opinion is. Yeah. Okay. Um, who would like to begin? Mr. Herr, would you like to go this way? So for the chief, uh, Chief Lee, I offer above satisfactory. Yep, that's where I'm at too. Mr. Ted Stone, Mr. Nazarilla. Would it be an, entirely inappropriate for me to abstain? Having no. Not, um, not having as much experience with, with Chief Lee, uh, don't take that as a slight <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. Uh, just being very new to the process and not having set any of the goals. We won't let you off next year. I don't intend to. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Catino. I'll go, I'll go with uh, ab above satisfactory also. And I will go with above satisfaction. If that makes it easy, I will entertain a motion uh, to give a performance rating of above satisfactory for the Chief Lee. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, there was one abstention. Okay. Okay, good. Got that, Maria. We're all set. And we move on to goals for next year. Um, so, Amongst, I only have information from three of our members. Um, there was consensus on all three about continuing with the community preparedness program that you are working on with the, ch with the fire chief and the um, town manager. Um, and then there's a variety of other things. A number of them seem to, some of them seem to speak to what we've already, Mr. Hur spoke about a good bit that you know, some kind of a, and maybe that's just a calling attention to personnel management issues that, you know, sh you should be aware of. I don't know that. I have to share with Speaking you. with Maria, I know many of these goals are supposed to be something that is measurable. And, and I do feel that some of these qualitative things um, are difficult to measure. It seems like the goals are better as, as a specific measurable objective. Um, the one thing that I included 
was this finalized policies and procedures leading to the HPD uh, certification from Mass Accreditation Council? And I put this in after discussions with you, Chief. Yes. And I don't know if the rest of the board is aware of that, um, but perhaps you would just speak to that because if it's something that um, can advance our, our overall qualifications um, and you know raise our level, it seems like a, a worthwhile thing to have. Can you just kind of explain why why you wanted to make this one of your goals? Yeah, we're at the is. stage now where we've completed most of our policies. We're in the process of sharing them with the with the, with the entire board, and where we certainly made uh, upgrades to the police department, uh, and uh, as far as becoming uh, accredited. So the next stage is a uh, certification, which would probably happen within the next couple of months, where uh, the state comes in and inspects our facilities, inspects our policies, make sure we have all the uh, proper procedures, guidelines, uh, proper training, um, proper uh, record keeping, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, it's an important step in, in the accreditation process. Mm -hmm. So have we had that before and lost it, or do other towns, not all no, towns, have it? Often it's never had. So it's not a requirement, but it's sort of a, a step up of yes. feathering your cap. Yes, it certainly makes the uh, department at the top of its game professionally because yeah. you have the standards of the best law enforcement uh, in the country as far as uh, policies, procedures, rules and regulations, training, and equipment. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about that. So it sounds like a laudable goal. Sounds like a laudable goal. Um, would other people like to speak to some of these goals? We don't want to have too many of them. I think, what, three maximum or two, something that's measurable well, and attainable? I, I, if I may, through the chair, I, I, I put in, um, um, you know, when we, a couple of years ago, we did the rollout of the, uh, the tasers. Um, one of the things that, you know, when we, we just got the dog and, um, uh, you know, with the uh, the fentanyl issue, you know, one grain of that could kill a dog or kill, could kill some of the officers if they're not uh, properly protected. Mm -hmm. And the, um, Thermo Fisher Scientific has a, um, a system I'll call TrueNARC. And it's basically this, uh, it's a small gun that you aim a laser at, at a substance and within seconds it sends back exactly what the, what's, what's in there. So before anybody even touched anything, they would know whether or not it's fentanyl and how concentrated it is if it is. You know, and, and there, are, there are a lot of um, grants out there for this. And, and so, you know, it's just one of those, th th again, it's one of those, those products out there that uh, are systems that I believe can really be uh, of, of use to it and, and, and keep our, uh, our offices safer. Uh, because, you know, you just, you hear about these, these incidences that uh, where public safety personnel just end up uh, losing their lives or getting very sick, and the same thing with the uh, canines, and most especially the canines for trying to sniff stuff out, which is why I went, I'm glad you went with the, the, bom the, the bomb sniffing yeah. ones, because there's um, less chance of them sniffing the fentanyl. Yeah. But, you know, but, you know it's, a, it's a system that, uh, uh, that's been in, in, in use for almost 10 years now, and it's, uh, it's very, very accurate and, and up to the second, and people don't have to get close to a substance in order to find out what it is. So that was just one, that was just a, a, a small compact goal that I was looking at. So through the chair, um, two of the goals that I had that didn't make the sheet, um, is I'd like to see the chief put in either a captain or a deputy chief position. I don't know if which would be more appropriate for the for the department, and um, focus on employee retention. Those were my goals. You can measure employee retention just by a turnover rate. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about people retiring. I'm talking about people not retiring, but not working here anymore. Well, perhaps we could, um, you know, under the community preparedness, same as on the fire chief, we kind of melded your thoughts, John, to say, um, you know, explore tangible results in training equipment and facility. Mm -hmm. Just have a general, um, you know, as, as deemed appropriate or something, rather than telling the chief specifically you have to get this, that, or that, but just add that 
that in both cases, you know, if there are some equipments or items out there, you know, let, let's look to add that as part of the community preparedness and just leave mm -hmm. it to your discretion as to how you achieve that. I mean, now you've had some, some great suggestions, but not, but just leave that open to you. Um, and, and and then maybe we just have a, a, a broader goal that is just employee retention and motiva motivation, as opposed to specifying, but just. It's hard to know. put a finger on motivation. It yeah well it's it is that's why you do want to make goals that are something that you can you can measure. Um, thoughts. I think I think there's a message that you know is all coming across. I'm just not sure how you put that into goals, or whether that's. If uh, I may, through the chair, yes. is there a perceived problem of retention on the department? I don't. I don't really. Well, my think sense I is there's the a perceived challenge in the environment based on the stress of officers out. For extended periods and how that then impacts officers and perhaps a couple of uh, uh, less experienced officers may have left as a result of some of that. I don't know. It's just a perception, right? So, um, you know, you have a you have a, a very incredibly important job in Hopkinton and all your officers and your leadership team all have the same you know, level of responsibility safety of 17 or 18,000 people and that's and there's some stuff that goes on in our community as quiet as it is uh, that can be very difficult and I think we're just feeling some of that now as a department um, and we have to figure out a way to get past that and still uh, retain and grow the officers that we have in the rank and file. Is that measurable? Can that be worked into a goal in some way or is it something? Mm -hmm. Let's reduce the turnover rate from year over year. Right? Well, you, you have, uh, you know, retirements, but yeah. you also have, but what's going on with the state now, we've lost a couple to bigger departments because a lot of departments are out of the um, mm -hmm. civil service. So sometimes, you know, Offices will leave for a bigger department because they could just make that lateral transfer and start over tomorrow, and then have a better shot at making a sergeant, detective, things of that nature. And then, you know, that's one of the focuses on retention is to grow our department where there's more opportunities for promotion, um, as well as uh, detective spots, SRO, and um, as well as canine. <coughs> At what size department is it appropriate to have another, another command level? You know, we're getting because you know we are getting large, and I was just wondering if that, if, if to Mr. Ted Stone's, you know, is there a, a deputy chief or, a, or, a, or a captain, where it comes into? Well, it, it, when I picked up that uh, that last party uh, to cover the SROs, I also uh, the process uh, having a promotion process to get a little bit more supervision on the road with such younger officers. So my goal is to uh, get a, uh, another sergeant on the road because we only have four on the road right now. And when sergeants take a vacation, we sometimes don't have that, that experience out there. So we want to enhance that, but we're also with, uh, looking in the area, uh, doing a study like uh, the detective sergeant where a big problem, we, well, not a problem we have now, is about detective sergeant can handle a lot of the uh, the court administration stuff, which was very important to the police department and prevents liability issues. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we we have uh, two lieutenants. If you look in uh, other other areas, other towns, you'll be, you'll see uh, even towns a little bit bigger than us, like Westboro, they'll have uh, usually two lieutenants. But I imagine once you get over uh, maybe 30 offices, then you could see the need for a, uh, uh, another bank or a deputy chief. You think this comes in with the catchphrase of staff development, or maybe this isn't measurable enough that it, just having had this discussion is, is sufficient. Staff development covered? 
Well, you know, like at the end of the day, a lot of what we're talking about when it comes to personnel and just overseeing the department and the day-to-day -day operations and interactions and things like that, that's the job. That's not a specific right. goal going into the next fiscal know, year that we would focus on outside the normal job. The normal job still has to get done. Right. It's these goals that would be above and beyond that. So yeah. I kind of put a lot of what we're kicking around now into the normal job stuff. I agree. Um, and then I think we've got a couple of other key goals here that would work well, and I think the chief weighs in as, as agreed on those two. Yeah, yeah. I think they're supposed to be measurable, and I think some of the stuff we're talking about is really hard to measure from a performance. It's just, as you said, it's part of the job, and it's worth, it's worth bringing it up, but I don't know that you could put it in a measurable context for a goal. Yeah. I think it's also important as we have this discussion tonight that when you go back, you know, and this is a public dialogue and I'm sure some folks will see it and may have some thoughts on it. Uh, from my seat anyway, uh, Hopkinton is 150% behind the police department and yeah. everything they do on behalf of our community. And we have here, and, and, and a lot of folks don't recognize some of the challenges that your team faces because of the situation with a couple of the officers being out. You could say a couple, three, I believe it is, right? So, and m much of Hopkinton probably doesn't even know that. Mm -hmm. And we recognize that. We, we have the good fortune of knowing that, right? And we recognize the stress that it causes. And so I'm not saying anything against the team at all. I'm trying to support the team, like the town of Hopkinton wants us to support the team because they do support the team uh, and figure out how we can sort of get beyond some of this stress. That, that's the reason why I'm sort of belaboring this point. Okay, well, other comments? Mr. Kamalo has anything? Mr. Kamalo? No more said, thank you. Well, it looks to me like Mr. Coutinho's desire for some, you know, specific tangible items, if appropriate, can be, can be accommodated under that community preparedness. If Maria, you use the same kind of wording we put together for the fire chief, um, you know, as, as deemed appropriate or something like that. Um, for the police chief. So we will keep the community preparedness. I think a number of these things that speak to staff management um, are best left out of goals and just, we've discussed it. They are, as Mr. Hur says, part of the running of the department, um, but they don't really lend themselves to measurable objectives that are, are right in a goal. Um, but- Accreditation might. The accreditation, I think, is, is something that I w we weren't aware about until you brought it up, and I think it would be a great thing for us to have. Um, so I would recommend those two, keeping the community preparedness and the accreditation. Um, are there other comments, or shall we go with those, those two? I'd what like, you, oh, go ahead. What are your thoughts on the accreditation, Chief? He's the one that wanted you it. Want to do it? Absolutely. I mean, that's going to drive a lot of stuff. Yeah, right, going through that process is going to drive so many of us. We're almost there. Yeah, so I, I think those are two excellent goals for the chief for the next year because that'll right. bring a lot of things together. He had, at, the chief had mentioned the strategic plan. We didn't even discuss that. Yeah, yet. That, that, that's something, if, 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 if I may, yeah, just <laughs> throw another yeah, wrench in. That, that five to ten year strategic plan. Uh, you know, that's something that, that uh, I've been waiting he brought for DPW to bring in also. But so I think that, uh, you know, that would be a great thing too. So it, it just gives us it just some visibility of, of what's, uh, what, what you see as uh, strategic mm -hmm. to, to get us through the, uh, the uh, future. I'd well, like to have you implement the saluting from Woonsocket, but uh, I can't make that a goal. <laughs> I like that whole, love that. I still get saluted down there when I'm in town. You well, may get saluted by people in town too that you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to load up too many goals because it gets it, it it becomes burdensome. But Chief, when I met with you, you had brought up the five ten year strategic plan. Mm -hmm. So is that something that you're interested in doing, or do you think that that's above and beyond with what we've already got here? Um, I mean, you, you gave me the idea initially. Yeah. Uh, uh, Start it. I think. Um, Start it. I think the accreditation process you know it's kind of an over overwhelming uh, process but that, well, I'm, I'm sure we can get it done by this year a strategic plan I probably wouldn't want to be held to like uh, maybe, maybe like a two-year plan and, you want to put it off you want to just say start it yep. I actually yeah you know was uh, uh, looking into um, uh, companies outside companies certainly uh, help with that process they'll do a uh, assessment of the town assessment a department assessment and, uh, and, and 
that could go to your point of assessing whether we need more rank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are we saying? Are you saying you might want to just word that as begin, or is that more realistic to put it onto next year's goals based on what you have on your plate already? Well, I'm definitely going to explore the process of uh, uh, utilizing uh, or, 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 or obtaining a, a, a company, okay. price it out, and, and see how much it is for, 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 for some type of uh, consulting. So we'll say so it's not the feasibility study. Chief Slayman did a very similar thing by bringing people in yep. to look at the, the at the, the fire station, the the, um, uh, the the time to go to each each thing and you know each incident and everything else too. So I think that's appropriate too. Oh. Explore begin. So something that explore, might be explore. tangible mm -hmm. is the chief would is, would explore and select a vendor, and yep. maybe they would start the assessment yep. for the first year and then come come back, report to you? In Mr. Kamal. In fact, if I may, Chief, we have been discussing this concept yes. uh, with your leadership team. Mm -hmm. Perhaps a way forward would be a goal that focuses on defining a process that would create a strategic plan for the department. So, <laughs> through the chair, I know I took a couple of minutes and I spoke of Chief Slammons, like the accomplishments, and I mm -hmm. spoke highly of him. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to just take a quick second and just say that <clears throat> Chief Lee, for me, as a selectman, has been very responsive whenever I have an issue. And it doesn't matter if my issue, if I text him or call him at 7 in the morning or if yeah. I call him at uh, midnight, uh, mm -hmm. he's generally right back to me. So. Um, like Brian said, these reviews are generally done, like my, when I review my staff, it's done in an office with the door shut and you can't talk about it. And here we're in the airwaves where you know, tens of people in Hopkins are watching it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so uh, you, know, you, can't, you can't, like my management style is more direct and shut the door and when we leave it's over. Can't be that way here. Um, if the, you know the FCC won't allow that, um, but uh, I'm I'm very happy with the responsiveness um, and your willingness to when I ask you for information that you're allowed to give me, that you share it with me. Um, you know we've had a couple of a uh, couple of executive session stuff throughout the year, um, and. Uh, you're always accessible and you're, you're quick to get back. And, and, uh, and I know I spent a couple of minutes talking about Chief Slam, and I haven't known you since you were a kid. Um, <laughs> but uh, I wanted to just take a quick second and kind of give you some props for, uh, for being as responsive as you are to me uh, when we need, when I need. Absolutely. Mr. Herr? So, Madam Chair, uh, when we were going through some of the discussion a few minutes ago, uh, Leslie Ficari had her hand raised. She's a former, uh, she is a HR professional in the okay. real world and a former member of the personnel committee. I don't think she's still on our personnel committee, but would you be so kind to give her a minute to just share maybe some HR thoughts on some of this stuff? Sure, I, I will tell you why I did not call in Leslie, but since you specifically asked, I felt that this performance review is between the selectman and the employee and it was not an appropriate forum for bringing in public comment. Um, I only included Mr. Sestari because he had passed a word along that my procedure may have been wrong. Um, but I don't know, Mr. Kamala, do you think this is appropriate? No. You, I think you appropriately stated it. This is the board's review mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the chief, mm -hmm. uh, the, the fire chief, police chief, and town manager's performance. Um, I, I mean, if. if if it's a process question or process comment. It was, it was a piece of information for, uh, from, a, from a human resources professional uh, perspective about opportunities that you can measure engagement and some of those things that you were saying aren't measurable. Okay. I would recommend you put that in writing to the board for future use, but I am not comfortable with opening this up into, into audience comment. I think it's a, a wrong precedent to set. I, I apologize. No, I, I'm 
but I don't think it's the right, it's the right thing to do right now. Um, d just let me clarify, on the strategic plan, Mr. Carmelo, were you saying that there's something that the town's already going to be working on that, that would lead into that, so maybe we should not put that as a part of the chief's goals because it will be, uh, should we do that or not? I'm, I was unclear after what you said. I am strongly in favor of the chief working on this goal. Yep. What I was suggesting is that the chief was being too modest <laughs> by not mentioning that we have already started this conversation okay. regarding developing a strategic plan for the police department. Okay, so if, yeah. if that's included with words like begin or explore as one of the goals, that's appropriate? In fact, the, the specific goal would be for him to define the process that will create a strategic plan. Okay. Did you have an input? No, I agree. Okay, so it looks like what we're looking at, and I would ask someone to make a motion for this, that the, the goals for the police chief will be to finalize a community preparedness uh, plan with the town manager and the fire chief. Maria, you will add some of the wording about the tangibles that we were using for the fire chief as well. Um, to uh, finalize, finalize, and, uh, finalize policies and procedures leading to the HPD certification from the Mass Accreditation Council and to um, begin the process of developing a five to ten year strategic plan. All right. Good. Would someone like to move uh, those goals? I'll make the motion. Mr. Cattino has made the motion. Second, please. Second. I'll, all right. Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. That is unanimous. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much. Thank you for everything. We echo all the Thank good you. service you give to us. Excellent. Okay. Last but not least, Mr. Kamalo. So, uh, the big guy goes blast, town manager, Mr. Kamalo, and um, these are the goals that we agreed upon for the previous year. They were three, to manage the Main Street Corridor Project to 100% design stage, that's obviously ongoing, um, to manage Town Hall Repair and Renovation Project to completion and to partner with the fire and police chief in developing a community preparedness plan. We've heard a lot about that tonight. So, Mr. Kamala, would you like to speak to some of those? I think uh, community preparedness has kind of been beat to death a little bit, but tell us about those goals and um, where we are. Well, first of all, uh, let, let me take this opportunity to thank the Board of Selectmen, uh, town boards and committees, town hall staff, uh, the senior leadership, as well as uh, our colleagues in the school department um, for being fantastic colleagues uh, and, and guiding, guiding um, myself and the rest of the team um, throughout the implementation of these goals. Uh, I think overall, uh, as I stated in my self-assessment, there are some big issues to to celebrate as a community. Um, the town has retained its AAA rating. Uh, we have found a way to keep our health insurance costs uh, increases almost to zero. Uh, they have, I think that's a significant um, accomplishment in the sense that it has, uh, health insurance costs have uh, a, a substantial impact on our benefits um, budget. Uh, we have also done a great job in uh, celebrating community. Uh, by way of illustration, uh, we, working alongside the senior leadership, have implemented uh, a caring community initiative, which is working great with our faith community leaders, uh, and have established a very effective network addressing some of the issues that normally would not come before the, the board for resolution. Uh, the other piece that we've done in terms of uh, um, celebrating community, I think is, was illustrated in uh, how the town resolved the FY19 budget uh, issues. Uh, the process was long. However, I think the key accomplishments were by the end of the day, we came up with a budget that did address the needs of the community. Uh, we did so in a collaborative way uh, and most importantly, throughout the whole process, we were mindful of uh, the tax impact. Uh, and, and, and I think that is consistent with 
everything else that we do here uh, as an organization. Um, look at our, our grant portfolio, where it's approximately $1.4 million uh, in FY18 of additional funds brought to the community. Uh, in addition, we accomplished uh, bond bill funding uh, through our legislative team. Uh, all we now need to do is to identify the appropriate mechanism and opportunities uh, to make that funding become reality. Specifically, with regard to the three goals that the board set for the town manager, uh, I have the following to share. Main Street Corridor Project, the goal again was to continue to move the project to 100% design in FY19. Here's what we accomplished. The project still remains in the TIP program, uh, scheduled for funding in FY 2019. Uh, town meeting, uh, again through the board's guidance, approved the, non, the funding for the non-participatory items uh, and based on a very thoughtful, collaborative, and at times intense process, we have been able to refine the design of the project to account for what this community wants. And we are including, as we have reported to the board, we are including uh, those changes in the 75% uh, design submission. Um, key highlights, uh, when, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm working on specific goals, I'm always looking for how does the goal impact the community. I think what is interesting in this project is the level of dialogue and debate that has come up in terms of addressing some of the key issues along the corridor. For example, parking. Every meeting I attend, parking comes up. I have <coughs> been enjoying the intense discussion regarding how you balance the, the needs for uh, meeting the bike, the bike lanes requirement, um, as has been stated to us by the feds as well as MassDOT, with the overall parking issues. Uh, that in itself has also started uh, um, interesting conversations with uh, some, some of the property owners uh, along the corridor who are offering us very good suggestions in terms of how to address parking. So collaboration, getting input, making sure that the ideas that we hear, uh, that we, we, we turn them into reality. I, I find that very, very, very interesting. In terms of, the, of managing the town hall repair and renovation project to completion by end of FY18, we did meet that goal. We're back at town hall. We're happily so. Um, though I should mention, um, it's interesting how throughout this process, we kept, I think, discussing as the leadership, um, discussing opportunities for managing change. Things that we take for granted usually became issues that we realized at an emotional level meant so much to employees. Uh, currently, one of the issues we're dealing with is parking, uh, where clearly, upon our return here, um, it's, it's becoming pretty clear that the need for parking here at Town Hall uh, is significant. Uh, it is part of our business process. It is something that the town needs to address uh, as soon as possible. Thus, as we were handling the transition back to town hall, what was important for me? Number one was making sure that we remain very sensitive and in touch with regard to what matters to the residents as well as the employees. As far as the residents were concerned, our goal was to minimize the disruption of delivery of service. I thought we did a remarkable job in that regard. Um, secondly, communication. We wanted to make sure that we communicated with all parties involved, including the boards that utilize town hall services. Um, th th thirdly, we, we wanted to always find ways to bring in additional resources to the community. Look at the work that was done here at town hall. Yes, we leveraged the insurance. Uh, we also found other ways to get things done for the community as part of that process. Um, so looking forward, uh, I'm, 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 I'm interested in finding out how the discussions at Centre School impact the future of Town Hall. Um, and then the third goal clearly I think has been discussed at length. I just want to highlight a couple of things. In, in terms of uh, working alongside the fire and police chiefs to develop a community preparedness plan, it needs to be said. The trainings 
that our fire chief arranged for us here at Town Hall, all town employees, are crucial to building the foundation for moving forward this, this process. Uh, we are, in other words, I'm more knowledgeable uh, on, 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 on emergency preparedness uh, than I was a year ago, uh, in spite of my background having worked in, in, in the international development uh, uh, and emergency response arena for, for, for many years. So I'm really thankful to the chief for, for organizing that, 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 that training. It, it is key in helping us deliver an effective plan going forward. The second piece, I like the way how we have looked for opportunities uh, to test the concepts that we want to build into the plan. Chief, you spoke about the work that we are doing um, with regard to LNG. For me, that, that's giving us the opportunity uh, um, for proof of concept. Does this concept really work? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to perhaps two years from now where we will say, here's an emergency response plan relative to this particular uh, issue in town, which we did not have um, before. So I'm, I'm really excited about that opportunity. And also, some of the micro issues that we deal with uh, uh, at a regular level are giving us the opportunity to see how our structure really works when the emergencies, uh, whether we are doing a tabletop exercise with the school department. And Chief, really, I'm still waiting for that tabletop exercise here at Town Hall. Uh, I'm sure we'll get there. So the, the, the point I'm making is, whilst we are looking at this plan as a, a linear process, also think about the proof of concept opportunities that we have we have addressed or we have accomplished. You were talking about tangible results. I can list for you. Number one, joint dispatch. That's a tangible result that will support the uh, emergency preparedness plan. Number two, the trainings that I've identified. So far, I have two certificates hanging in my office through that training. Uh, we, 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 our goal is to walk everybody here at Town Hall, including some of the board members through the NIMS 100 and 300 and 700 training. And then, and, then, and then thirdly, in terms of what we've accomplished on the ground, look at the progress that we have made in terms of our relationships with key institutions in town, whether it's Eversource or it's the big churches or it's the um, big corporations in town, we have strengthened that relationship and have clear plans in terms of what happens in an emergency. So we can go through a long list of tangible accomplishments already, and many more are coming. So overall, again, this is another exciting opportunity. I'm happy to be working alongside the two chiefs uh, and the senior leadership uh, on, on, on this goal, and uh, I'll take any questions from the board. I just want to say, I mean, we've, we've got these three goals, but of course, like Mr. Hur talking about the police department, how then there's your day, your regular job, and then this stuff. The amount of things that Mr. Kamala does every day, I mean, you'd make a great juggler because you've got more balls up in the air. There's and, and each project or each problem, you know, could be all consuming. But I don't know how you manage to do so many things and do them so well. Um, you never seem frazzled when you, someone contacts you, 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 you know, they've got your full attention. Um, I, I, just, I just marvel continually at, at how many things you manage to manage um, all at one time um, and, and just do them so well. So um, I don't have any questions. I, uh, I just mostly have a lot of admiration for you. The, the answer to that comment is, I, I, that's, there's a reason why I'm looking to You got a good team. Right. You got a great team. A fantastic team. Uh, Elaine being in the town manager's office has made a huge difference. Uh, Ma Maria's productivity has gone up. Um, and the senior leadership team is very supportive, very dedicated to this community. Uh, and 
I, I, am, I, am in, I am really, really excited about the accomplishments that we have uh, achieved through the efforts of the HR department. Look at what is happening in the <coughs> fire department, police department, and across this office. Um, New hires. For the first time in my 10 years in this community, I think we are poised to have the strongest finance team ever. And, and HI has been a significant uh, uh, contributor to that process. So the first one is Maria Glenn? Yes, Maria Glenn. <laughs> I can get yes, the Maria, Maria Glenn. straight. <laughs> yes, yeah. Other board members, questions, comments? Yes, sir. So I think on the three goals, um, we're doing, you're doing extremely well to your point a moment ago. It's when we review the town manager, review the town manager, review, we're reviewing Maria, we're reviewing Elaine, we're reviewing Maria in the office, we're reviewing many, many other people that help make all this happen day in and day out. But you're the one at the top and it all flows up to you and uh, I think you do a great job. Uh, the corridor project, uh, I'm probably the most least patient person in the room when it comes up, maybe not, I don't know, but. I want this thing done, and I saw a timeline the other day coming out of uh, a chamber event that was a little frustrating to me because it just seemed like it was going to drag on for another two or three years. Um, so if there's any way that we can speed that up, uh, I'd love to see that happen. That's not you. I get what we're dealing with here in terms of bureaucracy at the state, the federal level, and so on. But really, we'd like to get that thing done. I know you're pushing it as hard as you can. Keep at it. Uh, specific to the town hall repair and renovation and everything done there. Uh, kudos to Dave and the, your team there for making all this happen. I'm not convinced we're quite done here. You and I have had a couple of one-on-one -on -one conversations about the little things as I sit in this room and look around. I'm just like, I'm a physical space person. And you see those wires hanging down over there like that speaker? <laughs> They've been driving nuts for a month. <laughs> <laughs> and I've talked to him about it. <laughs> And he and I are actually going to take a tour of town hall. We're going to make a list of things that need to get done so I can stop being so crazy. Um, and then, you know, the community prepared this thing. I think we've talked to ad nauseum about that. So I love everything you're working on with your team, um, and we just got to keep at it. <coughs> Mr. T. So uh, I will um, agree with the things that Brian has said. <coughs> um, I think a lot of these things we've beaten to death. The, uh, the to partner with the police and fire chiefs, we cover that at, at nauseum. Um, the town hall repair, uh, that was one of my big pushes. Uh, as much as it was uh, nice to be in the summertime in a nice air conditioned uh, studio at HCAM, uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting is, uh, it's, it's uh, for a guy that grew up in town and, and I'm a selectman, this is where I want to hold my meetings, not at the HCAM. Um, <clears throat> when I took the job as selectman, um, I think Mr. Herb brought it up last year, um, my opinion, I had met you once before I became a selectman. Uh, my opinion was based solely on past and, and uh, maybe a present employee or two, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a, a great opinion. Um, you have done... <laughs> Uh, I don't think you quite put it like that last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm being very honest. Uh, you have turned me 180 degrees, much like I said to Mary Jo tonight about her presentation. Uh, when you and I speak uh, throughout the year, same thing as Chief Lee, it's, it doesn't matter what time it is. I remember one time I was angry about something when I was working at midnights and I called you at 3 in the morning. You answered the phone and we had a discussion at 3 in the morning. Uh, you're responsive, um, and you're sincere, and you don't present. I've not yet found a, a, an item that you present to me with your personal slant on it. I think that you do a very good job of presenting it to me as neutrally as you possibly can. Um, you're selfless when it comes to uh, discussing your, your, uh, your management team. Uh, you deflect all the credit to the to the other departments and when it's when your feet have to be held to the fire you take it um, and you do a great job on the contracts the negotiating um, your your uh, theory of striking when the iron is hot is uh, I agree with you 100% and I think you're doing a, a, a good job 
That's all I have to add. I've said as much nice stuff as I can in one night, so I'm done talking. <laughs> Throw your papers out there. I'm leaving. I'm out. <laughs> drop, the, drop the mic. Yep. Peace out. Emptied his reservoir of niceness. Yep. Is that right? I've got to go home and kick something. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wow, Container. You guys can't be critical. Okay, then I'll be oh. the critical one then. Oh, oh my okay. goodness, then. Now, I, uh, no, the, we, no, we, we are really hitting it on the. Uh, uh, downtown corridor project the only thing is i think we've got to do as and as a town as a as as um, public officials a better job with the pr and marketing of the benefits of uh, of the downtown corridor you know people are looking at it and and especially right now it's like what's going to happen to that this is the stuff i hear at the at the chamber meetings what's going to happen to my business during construction you know is it going to be worth having a business on Main Street, near Main Street, if people can't get it. You know, we have to stress the, uh, the long-term benefits and how it's going to look afterwards. And then we have to make sure that we um, communicate effectively the mitigation for um, uh, the, the, the construction project. You know, where are people going to park? Where can they drive by? What's going to happen? You know, we just we're going to have to get uh, better at communicating that because that'll that'll sell the project and alleviate some of the stress that the people have about the um, uh, the project. Um, you know, and and that that's really all I have about the the um, downtown um, for um, the, this building. I think that we still need the uh, the memorializing uh, plaque downstairs, like they did in 1986. They did a a smaller renovation. <laughs> but this was this was an absolute total gut, and you know for 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 you know all the people that 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 worked on it, we should have something down there that shows that, you know when when we really did a you know a, 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 as a group did a great job on this uh, on this renovation, um, you know there's the original one, then there's the '86, and and you know it it should be um, noted that uh, you know this was a it was a joint effort by so many departments and, and everything else, and, and you got it done. You know, just the, even from the beginning, you know, moving out of here and into, into yeah. temporary quarters and up and running within uh, 48 hours was incredible. And then moving in here and, and keeping up the, uh, the uh, customer service yeah. in such a short time, it was seamless. Yeah. And, that, and that's the way the, uh, the community saw it. Absolutely. And, uh, and I think we talked about the uh, emergency preparedness enough. Well, I don't think we've talked about our interest in preparedness enough. <laughs> um, so, Mr. Kamalo, I've only known you really uh, since May, and um, you've made quite an impression on me since then. Um, just, just echoing what everyone else here has said, um, I find it amazing how knowledgeable you are in so many different areas and uh, how, you can, how you have so many different balls in the air. Uh, as far as the goals that were set set previously, it seems as you've you've knocked them out of the park in each one. Um, obviously, we still have some work to do on the downtown corridor project. Um, I don't disagree with anything anyone has said. Um, I, I'd probably jump on on Brian's comment that if we can make it go faster, that'd be nice. Um, but that's only because I like instant results. Um, that's not on you. And um, I, I love what I've seen in the, in the building, I mean, knowing that this is a complete gut job and uh, we're able to get back, back in here and see the job that's been done, I think, I think it's been fantastic. Um, and relying on you know, not having to dip into any other sources for, for funds is, uh, is admirable. So I'm, I'm very happy. Very good. So we will come to the performance rating section. And before we do that, I will read, this is very brief, the overall summary of performance. Mr. Kamalo is a productive manager, skilled negotiator, and excellent communicator. Norman is dependable, approachable, and accessible to all. He turns a patient and empathetic ear to employee and citizen alike. In every circumstance, the town manager represents the town of Hopkinton with the highest degree of competence and professionalism. So, um, we will now uh, 
make our recommendations for performance rating. Um, I just go the same way I did before, I guess. Mr. Herr, I'll let you go first. We'll go right down the line here. Clearly outstanding. Mr. Ted Stone. Above satisfactory. Mr. Cotino. Clearly outstanding. Mr. Nazarillo. Um, I'd like to abstain, but if there's going to be a, uh, a deadlock here, I'll chime in. Um, can I hold off for the moment? You can. Um, for me, it would be clearly outstanding. So I don't believe there is a deadlock. So then I'm going to abstain. All right. I move that the board recognize and memorialize the discussion this evening awarding Mr. or recognizing Mr. Kamala's clearly outstanding job performance. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor of a job rating performance for Mr. Kamalo as clearly outstanding, please say aye. 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 And opposed? And there is one abstention, so that is. Um, can the person sorry. abstaining yeah. second the motion? Yeah. Can I oh. second it? I guess I probably can. Yeah. Second I'll second it. Sorry about that. All right, we'll change the second. Oh, no, no, you can, you can, can second he, the motion. Can he second it? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Catino, yeah, why don't you be the second? It's clean if. Shall we redo that? John, did you second it? I'll second it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and all those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed. All right, that is unanimous. For you, well, Four in favor and one abstention. Okay, great. So now we will just move on to goals. <laughs> we will get out of here by 10 o'clock. Um, so amongst the goals that we have here, uh, we, all, um, we have a continuation of the community preparedness program. We have a uh, consistent uh, goal of finalizing the Main Street Corridor. Mr. Kamalo had spoken with me about developing a strategic plan. Um, the only other, Mr. Tedstone, I don't really have something from you. I know, Mr. Herr, you put in balancing the budget and working with the schools. I guess I would question, isn't that something we do every year? Those are, no? those are fairly routine. I don't think they need to be included. Yeah. Mr. Tedstone, do you want to add anything or Mr. Nazarilla? If well, not, yeah. One, one of the things is, is uh, you know, to, to expand on our, our um, getting of grants, and I think that he's done that. So I guess that was one of the things that, <coughs> that, uh, that I had had prior to us appointing the, appointing the, the new um, gentleman working on grants. So uh, he proactively reached that goal before I even it stated it. So. Um, Mr. Kamala, when you and I met, you are the one that brought up the developing the town strategic plan. Um, do you want to speak to that? Is something that you would like to include in your goals, or would that be too much with all else that's going on? We can certainly live with the two. Yeah. We, without, again, um, suggesting that this can be accomplished in the next uh, right, right. Six, min six months, mm -hmm. the thought is that the town developed a vision statement and therefore logically the town should now move forward and articulate a strategic plan for the whole organization. Mm -hmm. um, I think this would be a very interesting exercise uh, in the sense that uh, this will provide the town the opportunity to define its priorities uh, for the coming years. And in fact, it's also uh, a great opportunity for uh, elevating what already exists here at town hall and in other town departments. Namely, we have individuals who are committed to the community, who are committed to public service, and now we need a rallying cry around what does that mean for um, our work here in Hopkinton. And so I think, I think this is something I, I, I should be discussing with the whole board. Um, and the foundation is there, there's a vision statement. The next logical step is to then define a strategic plan for the town. So do you want to put in begin work on the strategic plan or just not include that, know that that's something that you've got in the back of your uh, mind for something we need to move towards? I think beginning the work would, would, 
would be my recommendation. Okay, articulate yeah. it then. Yeah. That's a goal. Okay. So it looks like the goals would be, as we have all concurred on, finalizing community preparedness with police and fire chiefs, finalizing Main Street Quarter, and begin work on uh, developing a town strategic plan. Right? Okay. Um, I'll make a motion. Yep. To uh, for those for those three uh, goals, and as you just stated, finalizing community preparedness with police and fire chiefs, finalize the Main Street corridor, and to begin work on developing a town strategic plan based on the uh, Hopkins vision statement. Correct. All right. That's the motion. You need a second. Your second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Okay. <coughs> Good. Maria, I'm going to take all these back now. One, two, you can give them to Elaine. I'll give them to Elaine. Okay. All right. We'll just do it at the end of the evening then. Okay. Good. Thanks, Maria. All right. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. All right. Um, we've already done the marathon. The marathon fund committee charge will be later. Uh, we've done the committee appointment. Uh, town manager's report, uh, I think one of those is going to be postponed. Is there anything, Mr. Kamala? Uh, nothing else to add. Yes, sir. Okay, we're going to postpone the senior really center stand. item. Um, town uh, <laughs> liaison reports, board invites. Does anyone have a report to report? Uh, a couple of things. I have um, <coughs> the uh, the dedication for the DPW went wonderfully. It was a it was very well uh, well laid out um, um, dedication, and uh, we had the veterans dinner uh, on Saturday, and, and I thought that went wonderfully as well. Excellent. Anything else? Okay. Hearing none. Uh, future board agenda items. Anything. Anyone? I'd like to uh, still look at the uh, DPW strategic plan. We're actually working with John um, to finalize the plan. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Mr. Nazwella. Um, not. You may or may not be aware, but the Cannabis Control Commission has started issuing licenses. And um, I think it would be in the town's interest to meet with stakeholders and communities that have received licenses and find out what their experiences are. Um. Would that be just for the medical? Because I believe we took a town meeting. We've gone through this with the town. Not we have gone through this with the town. But um, to find out what the experiences are with, uh, with other communities. Because I, well, I would like to explore whether or not our um, prohibition was too encompassing. Suppose, for example, if Pfizer wanted to make a CBD hand lotion in Hopkinton, are we really going to say no? Well, would that, if I made through the chair, would that fall under a, um, a medical at that point? No. If Pfizer, that it was a, that it was If a, it's Pfizer, or if Johnson and Johnson wanted to do it, whoever wants to do it, it would just be a skin cream. Um, it wouldn't. You know, I don't think they could make a medical claim on it yet. And and if I made through the chair, the. Mm -hmm. um, if they're just just uh, giving out licenses, I don't know if there'd be much. Uh, there would be much data at this point. This is future. Oh. So we need. We need, I, I'm, I, I basically want to collect some data. I think uh, we made a decision without without data, which is fine. <laughs> but um, it, as it, it comes in, I would like to gain some gain some information. Would it make it uh, a difference if Pfizer? was making it, or if it was the uh, corporation of Catino and Nasrula? It wouldn't make a difference in my mind. I mean... Because it's not medically FDA approved, blah, blah, blah. Right. So it wouldn't, I mean, it wouldn't fall under a medical use because they can't prove any of the claims. 
but there's been plenty of people uh, clamoring over CBD skin creams for arthritis. And I think it's worth, uh, it's worth taking a look at. So Madam Chair, in the interest of time, <clears throat> the future agenda items should be a future agenda debate and discussion, and not so much tonight. Yep. Uh, but two, I think uh, I have no problem if that's something we can get on the agenda. I think we should check with town council though, specific to agenda items that have been voted by town meeting in advance and see what the thoughts are on that. That's the only would, thing I would suggest. I don't even want to debate that right now. Mm -hmm. here, that's but, fine. Uh, I, I, <laughs> it is late. Let's, let's take a look at it. But through the chair, it's your call. Yeah, I, I would agree with you, Mr. Hur. That That's where my, I guess maybe discomfort's too strong a word, but uncertainty in, in you know, starting to veer into an area where the town meeting has already taken a vote. Um, I know you're speaking of something different, but you're, I agree with you that we should, we should get some input as to, you know, Before where you draw Before we get too far down the path, let's see if we could even entertain something. Right, Fair. where you draw the line. So, okay. Yes. We have, I, just, we have some signatures, correct? We have some yes, signatures. Sir. Other than that, um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Good night. Good Don't night. go home before signing the stuff. Oh. This is just.